Welcome, everyone, to episode number 43 of Chatting with Nuts, and I am joined by the always lovely Joanna tonight. Joanna, how are you? Hi, I'm great. I'm so happy to be back on Chatting with Nuts. Thank you yeah. so much for having me. It has been a little while. I mean, I, I love having you on. Uh, we, we've done a lot of stuff together. We've done Malazan discussions out the wazoo. I've been on your channel talking about some R. Scott Baker. Uh, but you have not been on Chatting with Nuts in 26 or 27 episodes, I think. It's been a really oh. long time. <laughs> It's been a long while. Yeah, I forgot which episode it was, but it was a long while back. But Super happy to be here tonight. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to have you. And uh, it's just funny because usually when that happens, you know, with I had Sarah Reeds on two weeks ago and I said, you know, I haven't talked to you in forever, Sarah. We're catching up. But you and I, um, whether we're talking about like books on a stream or we're exchanging voice messages about things that we're reading, I feel like we're always we're always in, you know, communication. We always have a kind of a beat on where each other are at and what we're reading. Um, so I think we do a pretty good job of keeping caught up. And and lately, me and you have been doing a little bit of a buddy read, I would say. Uh, we, we're doing it real slow, and it is Blood Meridian. Look at that beautiful book. My God. So gorgeous. And yes. what is in it is not beautiful. It is dark and demented. <laughs> and, and Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. I was just telling you that earlier today because there, if you look at a couple of isolated sentences in Blood Meridian, you could see so much beauty in the way he writes at times. But for the most part, everything is so bleak and dark and grotesque and filthy. And, you know, it, it just also makes me wonder what would it be like if McCarthy wrote a beautiful book? Because I can't even imagine what that would do to me. Yeah, I don't know if he's capable. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I'm, he's capable. I just, yeah, I don't know, maybe not. But I, uh, I'm reading Suchry, which a lot of people feel is one of his more humorous works. And there is a lot of good humor in there, but still has some of those moments where you just say, my God, like that is brutal uh, in some of the more human aspects that maybe don't reflect on our our species all that well <laughs> yeah. are definitely in there. But I do think Suchry is probably so far been his most like uh, I don't even want to call it optimistic, but like, you know, humorous work. We'll just go with that. It's a semi autobiographical like semi-autobiographical is that a word okay uh cool never mind <laughs> autograph whatever you yeah. people, people can can uh drop me a comment tell me i messed that one up uh <laughs> but such is, is a little bit about mccarthy which is interesting because he's a very private guy and doesn't talk too much about his himself or his writing also um, so seeing that and trying to guess what is canon and what isn't from his past is very interesting um, and I've been taking that one pretty slow, but me and you were doing a, a different type of butter read. Most times when a butter read happens, it's like you zoom through it, you get some thoughts out and it's over, but we've been doing about 10 pages a day of blood Meridian. And how are you liking that pace? I love it. I'm loving it because especially with this type of book, I don't feel like I could absorb it on the same level. If I were just zooming through it, I think you could absorb some things if you zoomed through it. I, I don't, I don't know. But yeah. I know for me, taking it slowly, I am just getting, I'm savoring the experience. Yeah, I, uh, so I read it last month and I read it in like, you know, five or six days, I think, which, you know, is a good pace for me. And I really enjoyed it. And then like I said, my wrap up, like the longer I sat with it, the more I wanted to talk about it. And the more I, I thought maybe I had missed some big stuff. And I just immediately did said, let's just do a reread, you know, and that yeah. is like what you see online. A lot of people say you got to read it three times and then you've read it. And, yeah. uh, and most people would probably scoff at that and say, bah, throw it away. But I'm a curious person. I like challenges as well. Like whenever something kind of pushes back against me, um, sometimes I can shut down. Sometimes I can be like, meh, but if I was being truthful with myself, I said, there's, there's gotta be a little bit more to dig into here. So, uh, I just started that reread and then you just so happened to, uh, to have some interest in it and you ordered it and, uh, and now we're doing it together, which is great. Yeah, it's probably the biggest whim of a buddy read <laughs> I've ever jumped into. Because I think you were asking me about like, uh, if I'd read Moby Dick, and I hadn't. But then I started talking about how I had a professor who compared Moby Dick to Nietzsche. And, and anyway, then somehow you, we started talking about Blood Meridian. And I had heard on a couple of other videos on BookTube of people talking about singing the praises of Blood Meridian just going on and on about what a brilliant masterpiece it was. And then you started talking about it and it got me interested all over again. So I right away ordered the book and I'm so glad to be reading it with you. It's so cool. It wasn't on my TBR at all. 
um, but I'm enjoying it. And I am enjoying the slower pace. It's actually getting me to try to read multiple books at once, which is something I'm always trying to do and failing at. But I think I'm succeeding this time. So, <laughs> yeah, I tend to when I, when I love a book, there are times wherever I want to kind of slow down, but there's also times I want to speed up. And this happens to be one of those times I want to slow down. And, uh, you know, speaking of slowing down, our favorite 100 mile an hour ranter, Alan, um, you know, has if, if people are not aware, Alan was actually involved in an automobile accident um, last week and it, it was not great. And he's a little banged up. But tonight. Me and Joanna are going to have a little check in with Alan. Uh, for all those who were worried about him, and we're going to get a little bit of a. <laughs> so, first of all, I was trying to let y'all finish, but I just couldn't. I was like, of course, <laughs> of course, Jimmy and Joanna are doing a buddy read. Of course they are. Of course they are. Their attempts to remove me <laughs> from, from life so that they could read things together forever. Where's Philip and AP? When are they showing up to read, to read Blood Meridian? Alan, I'm trying to bring her back to our side. I'm trying to, to get her to, I'm, I'm the bridge to you. You know what by I mean? Having, by reading Blood Meridian, Jimmy, a book you literally just finished reading? Didn't you just reread The Wolf though? A year and a half later, yes, I did reread The Wolf a year and a half after reading it the first time. You're right. I did. That, <laughs> that's the same as last month. Oh, no. I knew I was going to get in trouble for this. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jonah, of course you did. I don't know why you went public with it. You should have kept it a secret. <laughs> I said, you know, I, I said, there's you want to see, hey. see some pee? You want to see some pee? Oh, oops. I hit the thing. Hold on. Hold on. Oh. Look at this. I have to pee into this thing. This thing right oh. here. P jug, classic. I used to carry one of those when I did long road trips and wrestling. And you didn't want to stop. You just had to have P jug, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can, I can, wheel myself to the toilet and stand up, but it's, it takes so long. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm like, it takes me five minutes to get out of bed and into this chair, and it'll take me another five minutes to navigate this narrow room, according to Tennessee Williams and back into the freaking bathroom and position because look because it's like a cartoon i'll get in the bathroom but this bulky wheelchair that is that's for people who are not me like i need two sizes smaller in this wheelchair please but it's like a cartoon i back it up move it, burp, 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 hitting the exact same things forward and backwards so i can finally get lined up and then I can, and i'm like you know what i'm just gonna sit i'm just gonna sit here and i'm just gonna pee in this jug uh, cause I'm not getting up anymore. I'm not going to do it. So <laughs> yeah, there are enough challenges whenever you're going through what you're going through. And, uh, man, I, I was, uh, I was not excited to see what happened to you, but I am glad that it is a, uh, you know, not for Look the worse. Look at that. Look oh at my that. God. Oh, wow. I, I was bleeding like a stuck pig. Apparently like I, they cut my jeans off. I only got two pairs of jeans and they cut one. They just cut like, they just cut you know they cut you out of your clothes they yeah. don't bother to take it off yeah. they just cut you out of it so i only got one pair of jeans now and the other one's covered in blood and from this blood like a stuck pig and then oh. today i was like why is this hurting my hand decided to expel a piece of glass that i didn't know was in there and i was like why what and i look and there's just like sparkling diamond coming out of my palm is a piece of glass so oh my god um anyway i'm not trying to like hog joanna's no uh, i asked joanna and she said she was more than happy to hear just, an alan update because we were worried sure. about you man a lot of people yeah, worried I, about you and the chat is plenty of stories when i get back to chatting with nuts though y'all watch episodes. Oh, wait, never mind i'm not gonna i'm not gonna reveal your your plans my plans, but, <laughs> my plans. I, yeah i was gonna be like i was like hey jimmy what if i'm what if I'm like, hey, Jimmy, I want to come on Chatting with Nuts. You're like, oh, no, Alan, I have someone more important than you on Chatting with Nuts tonight. And I'll be like, oh, that's super nice for your broken friend who has no bones that are remaining intact. <laughs> I'm setting it up, Jimmy. 
Listen, listen, this is this is a good opportunity. I should probably tell everyone what Alan's alluding to is that uh, next we're not going to wait two weeks for the next episode of chatting with us. It's actually going to be next week. It's going to be next Friday, same time as always, 730 p.m. Eastern time. And the guest will be it's not Alan, unfortunately, uh, but it is best selling author. Tad Williams will be coming on the channel. So if you're fan, a fan of Memory Sauron Thorne and Ostenard, uh, he will be here live next what? week. Look at how nasty that is. Look at how <laughs> gross. Look at how gro green my hand is. Did you have any other uh, scratches or bumps? Any? I mean, obviously you broke the pelvis. No, but... from the outside, I look fine. From the inside, I got seven bleeding broken ribs. And uh, my pelvis is broken in two places. And the, the real kicker is that the top of my freaking femur is broken. And because of that, I can't put any weight on my right leg. So anything you do with your upper body uses your flipping ribs y'all you have never been grateful for ribs in your life unless you've been eating it like sunny's or like like i don't know yeah. like a barbecue but your ribs use for everything and then so i can't do anything with my upper body even like lifting because everything every movement i do i gotta flip and lift with my arm which by the way i'm gonna be jacked like, i can tell you little tricep my torso is yeah, my torso is going to be jacked, and I'm going to have a little bit of chicken legs I'm going to be running around on or walking around on, oh, I guess. Yeah. But everything you do, I have to lift up, which hurts my ribs, mm -hmm. and my body's trying to sneeze because it wants me to hurt. So every time it's, I'm like, no, you don't. No, you do not. Do not sneeze. Mm -hmm. And anything I try to do with my bottom half, use my stupid pelvis. So I can't do nothing. can't do nothing but wheel around in this chair. Now, I, I have – I am – for first of all, Jimmy, you 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 saw that car look like. Yeah, the I car did not look good. I am very fortunate that I am alive. So I am very grateful that I am alive and that I will be able to walk, considering what that car looked like. Yeah, yeah. But I'm ticked off that I I take stairs two at a time. I run. Look, y'all know I hop out of this chair and I run to the kitchen. I'll be back getting some coffee. No, no. That, you'll have to put, freaking put it like get another gas, Jimmy. Like for the thirty minutes it takes me to stagger on in there. I mean, I, I'm the king of segways, so I feel like I could segue out of that pretty easily. I mean, come on, this is a, it's not my first rodeo. I mean, has there ever been a better time for you, um, you know, to read First Law than than right now? Listen to me. I it's hard because I'm fortunate. That I'm only like twenty pages in, and the Amazon preview like lets me see. <laughs> I need to see names written down. Like yeah. I, I, I cannot do names in fantasy without seeing, like I have to see them written down. So the problem is, is that we like, we closed on our house today. Like, so, and here, two things I did not know. Fun fact. I did not know how the skeletal system worked in the body. I knew nothing about bones at all. I learned all that yesterday from my physical therapist. I was like, Oh, that makes sense. Why I can't do anything. <laughs> and then yesterday or in the today, like, they, they blocked off two hours to sign closing papers. And I'm like, why? I'm like, why didn't the guy just come in, give me the paper, I'll sign it, and we'll be done? No. I signed papers for an hour and a half. Yeah, it's a long and arduous process. Yeah. I, yeah. I closed why back is there June. not one paper that says you bought this house? Sign it. Because everybody wants your signature. Yeah. Everybody wants it. It's ridiculous how long it takes to get all those signatures. I can't it was, tell it was madness. how yeah. happy I am to see your face and hear your voice right now. Like, I, am, I feel better today than I felt. Like it was literally one week ago, about an hour ago, I was hit. Literally. It's like seven days ago. About, like um, Christina messaged me like 30 minutes ago saying it was, it was exactly one week ago I got the call that said, you're, hi, this is the hospital. Your husband's been in a car accident, but he is... Uh, but he's awake and alert, and he says, don't panic. <laughs> but then they said, how close are you? <laughs> and so she's like, wait, what? What do you mean, how close am I? Like, is he awake and alert for limited time only? And so, whatever. I'm, I'm, I feel better today than I felt since then. Um, yesterday was bad. Yesterday was one of those, like, dark and moody cinema shots where the where the dude's like ah, and you know, throw stuff across the room you know upend stuff and you know like it's a bunch oh. of like cut shots of 
I can't do it. I'm never going to be able to walk. That's what it was. That's what it was yesterday. They, yeah. Oh, this right here? You think this is water? It's not. It's Miralax mixed with apple juice so that I don't get backed up. Yep. From our, uh, pain medication? Now, I have not been on pain meds because I don't hurt when I'm not moving. I don't hurt bad enough to need it. So I've been able to get by with like three Tylenol um, wow. twice a day. Um because it, like when when I'm I'm very fortunate when I'm not moving I'm not in I'm not in a ton of pain when I'm not moving it's when I'm trying to do anything <laughs> that it freaking hurts so yeah. anyway. is, uh, is Christina with you there at the, she uh... is no she is she went to go they, I think they went to finish packing the garage they're moving tomorrow so she's got a team of at least she got know, out of moving of people yeah I mean I know I got out of moving I got out of my stupid friend's wedding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got out of having to teach for the next two and a half weeks. I got out of midterms. <laughs> I got out of a bunch of stuff. There's a silver lining, I guess. I mean, I suppose. Like, but I mean, you know, I see y'all trying to plan a freaking buddy read while I'm sitting <laughs> in the hospital. I'm yeah, this is really jo- Joanna's trial. Actually, you're you're on trial here, Joanna. Because yeah, Joanna, you guys got punked. Yeah, you've been you've been a, a less than stellar friend to Alan. And, oh, exactly. you know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I no. think I think you're partly responsible. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, and I got I got my stupid report card today, which is lame because the way they grade, they freaking um like they co- the grades the grades come out on on Thursday and my grades are the same as my freaking like uh, like what is it? Like analysis? What is it? The they come in and they, oh, I don't know the words. Um, they're, I don't the know overview or what. Their their assessment assessment. Okay. Oh, okay. So my grades are the same as it was the first day I got here, and I'm like, what? I can nail that. Don't you write two needs assistance? You can write six independent. Like change, you better change that grade. I'm my students now, so I'm gonna be like, uh, and you change this grade, you need to give me a retake. Because I can freaking, I can, I can get out of bed, um, and it just sucks because I don't want to be here till next <laughs> Thursday, you know. And they great yeah. again. I want to go home and do nothing at home, where I've got my freaking PlayStation and I can beat up on you know third century fictional Chinese warriors playing Dynasty Warrior Seven. Rather than having to sit here, because I couldn't do it if I wanted to. Here, look at our little TVs. Yeah, I was gonna say, can we get a little uh, tour here of the? Uh, I mean, I don't really set. want to show you that pee jug that I accidentally showed you. Um, accidentally? <laughs> it no, 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 I showed you part of it. I didn't show you like that, that urine in it. So that's my bed behind me. That's a nice right bed. There. That has my Kindle on it. Um, a nice bed. I mean, and then crossword puzzles. And then over here is, um, this is. What is that? That's nothing. Oh, that's another bed. So they very nicely let, because I was having an anxiety attack when I got here, um, and yeah. they really nicely moved um, me to a room at the like at the end of the wing, like they'll never come back down here. And there's a second bed, so Christina can stay the night because guests aren't really supposed to be here past eight. So, but she was having not a good time and I was having not a good time. So she's yeah. been sleeping here. So she's gone most of the day, but then she comes here at night and hangs out with me. Would he so kill you to turn some lights on in there? Or? I mean, there's a light over this bed and I guess I could. All right, hang on, Jimmy. I mean, no, you don't have Jimmy, to. No, no, no. <laughs> Let me get up one second. Hold on. Look at Just him. Give, go. Me, give me once. Oh, hopefully I don't pull my computer off that stupid feet caught on the dang. Hold on. So this is what, this is my arm. I got a little grabber because I'm an old person. I got a little grabber. So I move that cord off my feet with a grabber. And then we'll come over here and I got to give him a little bed thing that lets me, I'm going to with my bed controls. And I don't know what my bed controls. Right, here we go. So I got this, which lets me move my bed up. And no, it doesn't. This controls the TV, but it also controls the light. See? <laughs> All right. Now I can oh, come man. back over here. Eh, eh. Oh, oops! You can tell I hit the. I, I hit saw the a line go through your video. <laughs> I hit the table. Anyway, <laughs> people are saying that I'm a jerk for having you do that. Um, <laughs> oh, you might, oh, they might be right. The problem is laughing. 
Do you know you oh. use your ribs when you laugh? Did you know that? I, did. I didn't. I did. I didn't until a week ago. Oh, my dad. My dad came in the first time I laughed. Uh, it was like a third day after my accident. My dad came in and said something about the Russians, and it was funny. He just said he said something something about the something about Russia, and and I just laughed. I don't know why he's like, eh, hey, Russians. And I'm like, dad, <laughs> what is that apropos of? <laughs> it's just, ugh. oh, anyway. It's oh, so funny because, I... like, in books, you hear of characters who always break their ribs, but they never ever tell you how Listen painful it is. Let me explain to you that every time I read a fight scene now, I'm going to be like, not realistic. Nope, that person's out for the count. No, you are not wearing your 70 pound armor after your ribs getting cracked. No, you're not. No, that's trash. Oh, you're right. So sorry, Jimmy. Uh, this is this is this is Jimmy's big time 10k. Like this is his pity piece that he does. He does a spot like this is his pro bono work that he does. Pro bono. He's got to do pro bono work. Like I gotta be able to write this here. off of my taxes, right? <laughs> <laughs> it hurts. And oh, that clock right there that you see behind me, two and a half hours behind. And if you fix it, it stops working. It just the 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 little second. And well, I don't know. It's done. Honestly, it looks it looks like about it's stuck in the 1970s. So maybe it's, it's well, a this time is a, this is a rehab facility. Yeah. Um, and I'm here because the other ones they told me were like nursing homes, yeah. and so I could go to the hospital one or the nursing home one, and so I went to this one. But, but there's you, this awesome Russian lady named Olga, who <laughs> she's. she's she always goes, nyet, 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 nyet. She says, no, 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 no. Nyet, nyet, nyet. She, and she freaking, so we have to do group group therapy, which I hate because it's like six minutes of doing anything. And it's supposed to promote like socialization. I'm 30 years younger than anybody else at this facility. So I don't need to promote socialization <laughs> <laughs> with a bunch of old people. And so we do like six minutes, like a like a set of 10 of like six different uh exercises and then we do socialization and so this woman like the lady in charge reads like these stupid like dumb like party games where it's like truth or crap and it's a question it's like true or false <laughs> like 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 discharge from a beaver's butt was used to flavor ice cream and candy for over 150 years and of course it's true because i'm not going to ask that if it's not true. It, it's actually what most vanilla flavor is made it's of artificial vanilla yeah what? it's made from beaver butter <laughs> seriously how do you all know true. this stuff i know it because yeah. i played truth or crap yesterday but but the yeah. thing is but the, <laughs> thing is, the thing is so olga's got she's got a little wheel around like stand up <laughs> like like tablet that she can dial in for like live translating right and so like a Russian translator comes on there and so they're talking back and forth. And so the translator had to translate the whole beaver butt thing to Olga. And Do they have beaver butts response. in Russia? Yes, but the problem is Olga responds and the, the translator has to say that like saying that Olga's like, I'm not gonna answer this. This has no relevance to me. Like, what is the purpose of these questions? And then Olga will stop and she will ask hardcore like geography questions to the whole group and so the translator is like where is andorra and i'm like oh uh spain and she's like she's like da 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 and and so today we did like three minutes of exercise and then olga just asked us sorry asked me <laughs> like geography questions for 24 minutes and it was so cool it was so fun and then she told me latin was a dead language and i said olga i said olga <laughs> how you betrayed me <laughs> she's, she's so funny and then she, she was like yet 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 which is no 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 <laughs> i'm so, so confused that she, so this is for socialization you said <laughs> we got to make sure alan is nice and socialized we oh don't want goodness. him we don't want him becoming it's so a recluse these, it's so these old people don't sit there and just like Rude, I guess, but it's just like I listened to that's at group therapy is the two, the two, uh, those are the two times that I've listened to first law. 
um, because I'm like, is it dumb? I mean, what if I just listen to First Law? But the problem is I just keep having to rewind it because I'm missing a lot of it. And also, I don't know what names are. Like, I had to go look up the name of whatever that stupid fat merchant guy, Glockta's messing with at the beginning of the book. Like, what's his name? Yeah, I, I actually I can't know. remember his name either. But do, do you whatever. feel like you can relate to Glockta at this point? He fell down some stairs, and that was hilarious because <laughs> I was like, yeah, I understand. And I like that Albert Abercrombie says the guy he hated the most is the guy who created stairs. And then, like, you know, three pages later, he's like, the guy he loved the most was the guy who created chairs. And I thought that was some fancy wordplay. Yeah. Um, I like that that kind of mirroring. Um, but, like, part of this, I'm just like, the tone of this writing style is very, it's very strange. Like, it's it's... I don't know. I'll figure it out once I can take some freaking notes. Um, at in, any rate. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I heard. I can't, I can't walk, that, but I'm doing well. Joanna was the first person that I messaged once I heard the news because I was like, I feel like Joanna needs to know. And uh, yeah. yeah, man. That was how I found out. I found yeah. out through Jimmy. I was like messaging him about <laughs> Blood Meridian and then he suddenly... Let me know. Speaking, and then of, speaking of blood on the median of the highway, <laughs> Alan's in the <laughs> car. <laughs> yeah, you need a car, right? It's not a great time to be in the car market either, is it? I don't know why someone decided to throw a car at me. Like, but I can. Uh, <gasps> now, was it your car? No, I was the passenger. And oh, so okay, I, tanked, cool. I tanked the raid boss. Like, I'm the one still in the hospital. <laughs> like, <laughs> seriously, like, I tanked it. Um, so I, any, like any freaking purple loot that comes out of this, I'm rolling need before greed, uh, because this is all wow references. Sorry. Um, anyway, I don't want to steal your time, Joanna. No, but, you're not stealing my time. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I think, like I said, I think we're all just happy to see you in good spirits, man. Because yeah, um, yeah I haven't made a post yet. Cause I was like, I'm trying to make a post on my community tab being like, Oh, so guys, I was, uh, I am struck by a car, so <laughs> I um I cannot post a video. I, like for the first time in my life, I was ahead. I had six videos filmed. I had six videos filmed because I was trying to film ahead of the move because I knew it was going to be you know process mm -hmm. setting everything up. And I can't edit a bloody one of them because I'm not at my computer. So uh, the lengths you'll go to to not post videos regularly. Seriously, is, is I am so lazy. I am so lazy. Like I got tired of having to be like, you know what? I don't have time. Like no one's buying that anymore. So I needed to throw myself in front of traffic in order that I could buy myself a reprieve. And now maybe Joanna will buddy read with you. Maybe. Yeah. I maybe. Mean, that was, I mean, really re let, like let's, let's strip away all the layers guys. I really just did this to get sympathy. So people would read books with me. Like that's really the only reason. Long price quartet. Q1 2020. That's what I'm saying. It's going to be a good year next year. All the Allen favorites getting written be like, oh, like, oh, hey, I, oh, oh, that actually really did hurt. But, <laughs> oh, oh, man, sorry. Did you know I was recently in a car accident? But here's a book I like. It hurts so much. It hurts so much. We, we did try to get, uh, we sent a raven to KJ Parker, um, but he. Compound. Uh, yeah, yeah, we sent it. We sent it to the KJ Parker compound to see if he would visit you, uh, and he said never no, heard of he, him. He, I know, he lives in a log cabin in the middle of the like woods in Britain with no internet, because <laughs> of course he does, of course he does, of course he does. <laughs> Someone said that your current uh, situation in your rehab facility sounds like the plot to a Stephen King novel, it and does. I couldn't, and I, I just hope that it has a better ending than than most. I hope so too. Uh, but we are going to read. We are going to read Shogun, though, right, Alan? We're reading Shogun. Sure, yeah. Reading Shogun. I can't, I can't wait to start Shogun and have everybody yeah. finish it in a week. No, thirteen hundred pages. We're going to yeah, do over, it in over two months. Over two months. But we're going to pace it out really slowly. So, if you want to yes, join, Jimmy. Yes, I, I Evie. Can't. That was amazing. They got freaking Josiah Bancroft sent me a clip in my Get Well video. <gasps> Absolutely amazing. Did he really? Oh, cool. Yes, absolutely incredible. It was so awesome. So awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have had Zaxby's since I've been in rehab. 
Charmaine. I have had Xanax beans. Christina's bringing me little Caesars, extra most bestest. Which Do you I eat have it just because it's called Caesars? Pizza. I mean, no, I eat it because it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it is for the amount of, it's pretty decent pizza for being relatively cheap. Um, and I really like their cheese. They have the best cheese sticks of any the of best. the places. They really they do. Have the best. So I really just wanted cheese sticks. And Christina's like, you need, you can't eat cheese sticks for dinner. I'm bringing pizza also. I'm like, all right, fine. But make it extra most bestest, which I hate because it's so grammatically wrong. But I don't even know what that means. I don't it, just, it just means there's more cheese and pepperoni on it, which is delicious. Huh? Oh. You know, they used to call those extra <laughs> toppings. Yeah, I know. No, B's knees, the car did not win. I won. I tanked it. Like, I tanked it. Um, but it, uh, yeah, Philip, your, look at, your friends look at are Philip, okay, right? Philip is commenting on my diet while I am <laughs> in the hospital, recovering <laughs> from a from grievous bodily harm. <laughs> Philip, is, Philip, what, Jimmy, do you think when you hit 20K, you become more judgmental? I hope so. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you know shortly. Jimmy, it's going to be this time next year. I'm still not going to hit 10K. Yeah, guys, can we get Alan the 10K? There's 125 yes. people watching right now. Surely not, some of you haven't it. subbed Alan. Or maybe he pissed you off and now you yeah. need to go resub. That's not surprising. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I um, I uh, like, I don't have 20,000 subs, but the people who sub to my channel are so incredibly like yeah. consistent. Like, yeah. I have a really like loyal subscription base and before and in in all honestly honestly and i was gonna say this for our chatting with us jimmy but like the outpouring of support from not just the booktube community but also the, like my school and like my students and you know like the the community here and like it is been overwhelming and i've cried more i don't really cry is not what i do a lot um, but it has just been so, because like I told you, Jimmy, like I, like and I told you on, I both y'all today, like before I was like, I was getting kind of depressed. I'm like, what is the purpose of anything that I do? Like, what, it, like, what am I even doing? You know? Yeah. And then, you know, and I, and I always joke about, you know, my community's dead and everything. No, not even kind of. And it was so touching that like, even like subscribers, like even just subscribers sent videos in the get well video. Like, and I was, it was, I was like stunned seeing like, you don't have a channel, but it's just people who wanted to send a get well video. And it's just, yeah. it's amazing. And I'm, oh, I'm, right. you know, oh, I'm over, I'm overcome and everybody's just so kind. And it just, it makes me happy to know that, you know, everybody doesn't hate me and that I'm not just barely tolerated with my terrible opinions and constant, I don't know, having to come in and be like screaming in your, in your comment section. You've had a profound impact on thousands of people. And yeah. uh, it doesn't matter if, if you have 10K, 20K, 30K. I, I don't know anyone um, that has a more loyal um, viewership than you. And I think it speaks to your authenticity yeah. and to who you are as a person. And uh, we're all lucky to know you and to love you. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, man, I mean, Another thing that me and Joanna were talking about before we went live is like, I don't think you realize how many people that you've inspired to like give it a shot. Like maybe people who felt like they, they, they couldn't or shouldn't, or they're too weird or too hyperbolic or whatever it might be. And, oh, yeah. and uh, you kind That's of, true. you wrote the playbook, you know, to mm -hmm. go and be yourself. And I think that you've probably inspired more booktubers, maybe other than like the big, big ones. Yeah, the right? huge ones, obviously. But when it comes down to it, I would still put you up against anybody. So uh you're beyond special you know you're you i love you guys i yeah. love you i i wouldn't be here if it weren't for you, you this know? is this, this is the best chatting one that's ever <laughs> <laughs> just a little group hug here guys <laughs> I, I like i'm i'm sad the, the most recent video i filmed was and, and the thing is like you're gonna see me slow down in my videos because uh like when um when my tylenol wears off i have to pause between like breaths because i just don't have the breath support um but i did get to film my blindfold booktube challenge video with christina before the accident so i am very energetic in that one um i'll have to wait a minute because i'm because i can't i'm also not projecting right now projecting is harder um like making like talking loudly 
is harder. So filming will be slightly more difficult to be, um, you know, yeah. excitable and stuff. And I certainly can't flail about. Uh, flailing, <laughs> flailing hurts. In fact, the, what I have to resist the most is when I drop crap, the instinctual reach mm-hmm. to try to stop. Like today, I had my headphones, my little box of headphones, um, and they fell, and they were going to fall between my legs. And so I, with the broken pelvis, <sighs> slammed my legs together to try to stop them from falling. <laughs> oh. Ow. Yeah. Ow. And then when things fall, I instinctively reach like really fast for like reaching slow is fine, but I reach fast for them. And I'm like, dang it. That's why I have my little graboid. Um, uh, hold on. Where's my graboid? I showed you my graboid, right? Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> One step closer to being a cyborg. <laughs> oh, totally don't mind if I do. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm done with that. I better put it back way over here. <laughs> exactly. Oh, oh. Fit to be read. Thank you for the two spot super sticker, my friend. I appreciate it. Very generous of you. Uh, and for all those who are uh, only on audio, Alan is currently showing us a demo of his uh, graboid <laughs> robo arm. And uh, oh. is that a cigarette? Oh, I'm closing. You need me to sign something? One second. <laughs> That's why you signed all the papers for your house. <laughs> I did. I did. This is my my crossword pencil, and I brought another one to the hospital. And I don't know where it is, but like this one, I refuse to get a new pencil. Um, I've been using this one for like months, and it's so small. But the problem is, is like the tip is all. Look at that. We got oh no crap. Um, I think it looks like it so. got hit by a car. That is rude. <laughs> See what I did. Uh, so, if y'all, for anybody that doesn't know what happened, I went to. Do I have time for this, Jimmy? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right, just make sure. I was going to be in a stupid wedding for my stupid friend who um, is finally getting married. He's been dating this girl a year, and I have never met her. And I'm the only one in the wedding party that hasn't, and I'm better friends with him because she lives an hour and a half away. And so I hate him. And so I'm like, I don't want to go to your stupid wedding. Because you won't, you never let me meet your fiance, and so, <laughs> so, so I kept forgetting to go pick up my suit when they said it was ready, and so I left it to the last day, and I'm like, I hope I don't need adjustments. So I went and picked it up after school on Friday, and I'm like, well, it's on the way to the rehearsal dinner, so I'll do that. And as I'm coming out, the best man and his wife drive up, and they're like, Alan, and I'm like, dang, what up? And they're like, you want to ride together? And I'm like, okay, cool. This is this will be significantly better than driving an hour and a half uh, solo. And so his wife got in the back, and I got in the passenger. She offered. I, I, um, and so we were going to get um, – we are going to stop McDonald's because he wanted coffee. She wanted fries. I wanted both. <laughs> and so we're pulling we're, – we're, we're, we're going straight across, across the road basically. Um, and I was turned back. She was looking down in her, in her, in the back at her phone, making the mobile order. I turned back to say, "Make sure you get me a Coke Zero too, because I'm not eating those fries with coffee." And then I woke up, upside down, and them cutting me out of my car, out of his car. I don't remember anything, nothing. Wow. So um, pretty safe to say you had a concussion, right? I mean, it had to. Like yeah. I, I remember literally nothing. Literally, if I'd have died, I'd never known it, never known it. Um, and the good thing is, is that none of us saw the car. So we were not because that's why drunk drivers we always tense. survive, right? Yeah. Yeah. So none of us were tense. So none of us saw. Oh, man, that's so, yeah. yeah. He, the guy who hit us, was at um, tourist attraction. He's from he was a tourist attraction and he got was he got in a fight with his wife and ran her over with his car and was fleeing the police mm. instead of further away from town fleeing the intersection that we were hit at is the busiest intersection in the entire city because it's where the freaking tourist mall is it's like 
you're not going to run from the cops running into town where the worst traffic is, you idiot. Mm -hmm. And so he was running from the cops. And the thing is, we were the fourth car through that light. So, you know, you look, you, you don't gun through a green because of the people who are going to run the red. Right. No one runs the red four cars in. No. But, and that's what happened. And then, 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 dude bro, who is drunk, by the way, gets out of his car and runs on foot. And the cops tackle him in the Olive Garden parking lot. So, like I said to you, Jimmy, soup, salad, breadsticks, prison. Boom. So, <laughs> like, wh- what? And <clears throat> so it's just so my uh, so one. I still ain't met that girl. I still <laughs> not met that girl. <laughs> and I, I messaged him. I said, I'm so sorry, like your big day is messed up because, you know, me and the best man or we can't be there and everything. And also, I still have not met your fiance slash wife now, I guess, <laughs> because because I don't really change because I'm injured. Um, and so. So. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But the other two are the the driver is home and the and his wife is, is home um and so but it, they're having a tough time because they have twin one-year-olds and they're just not physically able to like take care of twin one-year-olds so yeah. um their parents are but like the one-year-olds don't understand why they can't like run over and like latch on to mommy and daddy so that's just so heartbreaking um yeah and so you know so I tanked it. It hit me. Like the thing hit my side. So I tanked the thing. But I mean, you know, they have kids at home, so you know, better better than me. And we're all alive. So Yeah. 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 So sure. yeah. So that's what happened. Stupid that is a crazy story. I mean, it is kind of like a blessing that you weren't conscious through that though. True story. True story. And what I didn't realize is I thought I was immune to crap like this. I have never been afraid of driving in my entire life, ever. But when I was being transported from the hospital to here, mm. uh, when he was going through a light, I got really anxious because I thought, I, like, I just, I guess, subconsciously thought we were going to get rammed. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of spooky. Yeah. Um, hmm. Oh, I, I answered that, Philip. They're they're doing good. Um, they are. I mean, they're doing as well as can be expected. Um, but my phone survived. Not a scratch on it. Thank you. Hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get an endorsement out of this. Hold on. <laughs> Joanna, you were not expecting this for your. Uh... <laughs> I wasn't, but it's it's a I'm wonderful so surprise. Go no, no, you're fine, Alan. Alan, you're fine. I was uh, I got so emotional when I found out about this accident. Like you have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Samsung Galaxy Twenty One Ultra, not a scratch <laughs> or either that or this freaking clear case, clear like rubberish case not a scratch on my phone not a scratch but it took like five days to get in um and then my shoes this is the great mystery y'all so anyone all anyone who is following like my late night sprants knows about my shoe yes mission i went my, my shoes are four years old i wear the same shoes and i just buy a new pair every three four years and they don't make them anymore so I found one pair in my size on eBay and I bought it. And that's like four months ago. Those shoes are still in that car because this is the blessing of this. My feet were pinned. Like my feet, the, the most scared I was when I woke up and realized my feet were pinned between the um, steering wheel and, and oh. his uh, seat. I thought I was going to lose my feet. And that is where I was like, like panicking the most. Yeah. But they just pulled my feet out of my freaking loafers. Just whoop. Didn't have to cut me out. My loafers, they fit loose. That's why I wear them. Just whoop. Slipped them right out. So my shoes are still in that car. And the, the, my, my buddy who was driving, every time he goes, he went back to that place, I said, where are my shoes? Like, Alan, those shoes aren't there. And I'm like, Dustin, when you go, you need to look for my shoes. And so he went. 
and he's like, I can only find one shoe and everything was covered in like gasoline, like everything in the car is covered in gasoline or blood. I'm like, bring me my shoe and I will oxy clean the crap out of that. And so my stepdad, who's the one that got my phone back, asked, what about the shoes? And they're like, oh, someone came and got the shoes. The, the driver came and got the shoes. So like I messaged him today and was like, I, my shoes. And he's like, woo. He's like, D did you clean them yet? I'm like, no, I don't have them. They said you have them. He's like, I don't have your shoes. I'm like, where are my shoes? <laughs> I'm a crawl. The thing is, it's a death trap. Like when you when you crawl in it to get anything, glass is raining down on you. Apparently, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go. I'm a, someone's gonna go in there. I'll hire. I'll hire my freaking like six year old nephew who's tiny. I will say, Griffin, <laughs> you're looking for your you're looking for Uncle Alan's shoes. And if you get it, I will literally buy you the new Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I. They don't make them. I gotta find them shoes. And I, will, I don't care if there's gasoline on them. I will wear them and it will slowly seep into my blood and poison me. But I'm going to wear those shoes. So I got to send oh, – my stepdad was here and I didn't tell him. Dang it. All right. I got to call my stepdad again and be like, I need you to go. And then did you know the people tried to not let us get a refund on our suits? We didn't make it out of the parking lot. You're kidding. And it, my stepdad, who is – my stepdad is – the kind of guy that you want but he's like a, a male karen but but a stew actually, if you will yeah but it, but it's not over dumb crap it's not like we don't have the receipt it's like they literally put the suits in his car because we did we put my the suits in my car and we didn't drive my car so it, ne it never even left it never even left the store parking lot and, you know and and that was like we were leaving the suit place when we were hit you know crossing the street and he's like, like, I get y'all's policy, but that's ludicrous. Like, you could not have worked here and not known about that accident. People I didn't know, people here knew about that accident because it's blocking the biggest, the busiest intersection in the city. And so he, they finally did give us most of our money back. But it's just like, really, guys? What, co what like, company is this? I, I'm not, I'm not going to say that on, on, on the air. Cause I don't want, I will tell you privately. Well, um, I just, I want to boycott them. No, I'll tell you privately, but okay. I don't want to say it on the air. Cause I, I don't want them. I don't want them to be like, Oh, well he's, a, you know what? Return suits for people that are freaking getting hit. Yeah, yeah man. So I'm gonna find them shoes. And when I do, I'm gonna come on channel with nuts. Because that's, that's what the people want to know. Reeking of gasoline. Yes. Don't, Covered in don't blood. Care. You'll be able to see the fumes on the camera just like floating up. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Anyway. Um, thanks for letting me come on and hang out with y'all. Alan, I can't tell you how relieved I am not just to see you, but that you're okay. Yeah. Same I here. appreciate it so much. Hold on. Hold on. Hold Same on. here. Uh. Hold on. What? What are you doing? I'm doing something for Philip. Hold on. Wow, Philip, look at this. Oh, look, look wow. This pain you're putting this man through with they a broken like this, But not four years old. They literally look exactly like this. Exact same pair. Just not four years old and worn. These are my echoes. And they're so comfy. And they That's don't a make good them brand. anymore. Someone out there listening, get Alan a pair of echoes. You figure can't. it out. We also you need can't. to get Alan a pair of pants. I have certain <laughs> ideas. That's, I mean, that's going to be the first thing I got to do is get a second pair of jeans. I can't just wear one pair of jeans. So no, nah, you can't be a one jean kind of guy. That doesn't work. <sighs> yeah, they don't make them anymore because I've, uh, um, I'm not going to show the pee jug again, Connor. <laughs> <sighs> Moving my foot. Oh, oh, I can show, hold on. Before I go, I can show you another tool. This was really just a, another way so I can show you. This is what Phil is making me do. I'm about to pull this computer off again, but fortunately I've got the graboid. Move the cord out from under my wheelchair. Dad, gum it, I'm stuck. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I got this, which looks like a child's training cutlass, but it is not. It is, in fact, a shoehorn that I stick in my foot in my shoe. Mm -hmm. So I put this shoe on without it, like, one of those you know, falling time. on itself or whatever. Oh. Still, let me take my shoe off. In an attempt that to, sounds handy. to harm my person, because Philip is 
he's lost his compassion at 20k. <laughs> he better reread Malazan again. <laughs> you better start another read along. Speaking of, so help me in April when that book comes out, if y'all do not include me on that second Carsa book, I will get hit by a car again. <laughs> Alan, we read that God is not willing with you. You Look, just didn't participate. <laughs> I, have, I had a difficult time then. I am better now, Jimmy. I read Augustus <laughs> with everybody. Jimmy. I asked you, us. Alan. I said, are you sure you don't want to put it off, Alan? No, 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 Juana. March is fine. March is fine. Look, God, look guys. Look. <laughs> look. I have I've had a transformative experience. I am only going to read popular books. <laughs> I'm only going to read long popular books starting next year. I will be, yes, I will, I will never give anything below anything popular will always be five stars. Um, I will, I will court the, the royalty of the internet and try to and like massively increase my viewerships. I will only have clickbait thumbnails be like, is this book worse than being hit by a car? <laughs> Find out. <laughs> and ironically, I think that would be a big hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say with me on Say. Brandon Sanderson. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm only reading Sando next year. That's it. It's only Brando Sando. And like, is this? Is this? I don't even know. 20K don't Allen know. in 2023 is the goal. Yay. Drinking like spilling crap all over me. So anyway, I do, I do want to know, and I know you're going through some pretty uh, intense therapy and stuff now, but have you considered for like recovery, just reading Jade Legacy? You know what, Jimmy? I wish I'd have known that a week ago. I'd already be out of here and taking stairs two at a time again. That's You're right. It, it heals all. You should have you should have told me that a week ago, and I could have done it. I'd already be out of here. I'd already, I'd already be out. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. He's, he's I, told Alan that I, would, I told Alan I would only read on in the Jade Saga books if he did. I will read. I am going to finish it next year. Because we buddy read Jade City together. Do you remember that? Well, maybe the three of us should read the Greenbone Saga together because I've never read it. But you got to let me and Joanna start a month ahead of time because (laughs) we take longer to read things than three days. Jimmy. Alan, 2023 is the year of the slow read. Oh, all right. I'm slowing down. Jimmy is being so kind and slow for me with this book. I think it's just amazing, Jimmy. Philip, that's an excellent question. Um, It has been... I have not cleaned it and it has been everywhere. So that was gross <laughs> what you just saw. Ew. I don't know what's been. It's a, anything I've grabbed, it hasn't been washed. <laughs> so, Alan ingested like a half a gallon of gasoline last look, week. So he's seriously. I, and like a bunch of like freaking, like, do you know how much glass gets in your hair in a car accident? You ever been in a car accident? Like, we we're finding glass in my hair, my ears. Like glass, wow. freaking everywhere. Oh my goodness, so wow. nasty. It's like sand. I hate glass. It gets <laughs> everywhere. Uh, it's uncomfortable. Those, yeah, that's just crazy, Alan. I can't even imagine. I've been in some pretty crazy car accidents, but nothing like that. Yeah, I am. I'm the most risk averse human being on the face of the planet. My brother is the one who's had like tons of bones broken. Yeah, you know, tons of surgeries because he is one, both an athlete. And just accident prone, or just like I am injury too. prone. I'm so accident prone for some reason, and I have had oh, my okay. jeans cut through before too. <laughs> yeah. Oh really? Like I, mm-hmm. I got run over by a station wagon when I was 14. It was crazy. Yeah, both my legs. I got to watch it. It was crazy. Dang. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all, y'all live some tragic lives. But I have to say though, like that, what what you were saying about. Um, like not being conscious for when it happened and anticipating it. I've been in so I've been in a couple of accidents where like I've seen it coming and it was the worst, like the worst. Yeah. (laughs) There's nothing worse than that. Well, anyway, 
Mm. I'm gonna get out of y'all's hair so y'all can have a chatting with nuts that is not like, you know, Alan talks about. Alan picks up stuff with this grabber and <laughs> talks about being sick or uh, injured. Or do you know? Do you know? Do you have any idea at this point? I know it's gonna be a long road of rehab, but do you have any? idea at this point about like when you might be discharged to go um so usually people are here 10 to 14 days i've been here tuesday so i've been here tuesday wednesday thursday friday four days it's a friday yeah four days time time has no meaning to me in this place anymore Mm -hmm. all i know is that it's they wake me up at 5 30 in the morning to give me a shot in my gut and give me my other meds and then at seven, they bring me breakfast. And will then, you be home for Christmas? Yes, I should be out. I will not be home in time to go back to work. And even if I was, I'm not. I'm not mobile enough. Yeah, let's not to go let's back to work that. before break. Um, but yeah, I'll be home before before that. I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping it's not more than a week. Um, I'm hoping I'm out of here by next Friday. That's my hope is I'm hoping I can I type in you. from home. Chad Williams. I don't know. I've never read your books. Your books are too long. <laughs> your books are really long. If your book is too long, you have to split it into two. You should call that two books, not one <laughs> period. <laughs> I think the green angel tower is longer than all of your books you read this year. Thinking, I mean, I really think it is. I think it's more pages total than all that. I think I've read like maybe like, like 1,200 pages all year. Maybe. <laughs> you're the short book. <laughs> Look, you're the you're the short book. I can't even get through those. Yeah, man. You have gotten through a lot of KJ Parker though this year, haven't you? Yeah, I know, but like I gotta, I gotta, I gotta change my shtick and read stuff that people read if I'm gonna continue my my um, my switch to the to the to the popular side i only read popular things i'm the opposite of a hipster now i'm now a trend follower so how about a trend setter i tried that jimmy no no one wants to read my stuff yeah it didn't work yeah (laughs) i know it didn't work i tried i tried um but anyway i'll let y'all go but i will i will if i can i'll hang out but i think christina's gonna be back pretty soon yeah, um, take some time and rest, man. She actually has to get in before eight. They won't let her in after eight, so she's got thirty yeah. minutes to get here. Or else she, she's gonna she be better, locked up. She better skedaddle, man. She needs to hurry because I also want that cheesy bread. <laughs> I will, Jimmy. If I get that cheesy bread, I wish I wanted her to get here before. I'm gonna send you a picture of me eating that cheesy bread with <laughs> the grabber. Don't. With Please the grabber. Don't. That's disgusting. <laughs> the grab boy. No, I'm gonna show you a video of me dipping it in the marinara with my graboid, and then. <laughs> And then, <laughs> this is um, stupid. This is so dumb. This whole thing's going to get demonetized for being stupid. So anyway, <laughs> bye guys. Alan, feel better. Thank you for dropping by, man. Yeah, take care, Alan. So great to bye, see guys. you. Bye. Good to see you. See you, Alan. Oh, no, there. <laughs> Joanna, thank you for sparing some of your time here tonight uh, oh. to welcome Alan in. I, I, I knew you you didn't mind, but uh um. Yeah. I, I know just as much as me, you wanted to make sure that uh, everything was going okay over there at the rehab center. And I think the chat appreciated it quite a bit because uh, we care, we care about that, uh, that old Alan Walker, <laughs> don't we? We do. We care about him so much. And that was wonderful. It was such a treat, actually. It was such a treat. Yeah. yeah. Just to uh, hear his voice, you know, knowing that there could have been a lot worse. We could have never, really could have, yeah. Could have never had another Alan rant again. But uh, long live the rant, long live Walker. He's still there. He's going to need a Walker, I think, after the wheelchair. <laughs> I think that that will be a thing. Yeah. Um, but he's still going strong, and uh, this show wouldn't be what it is without Alan, without a doubt. So mm, that's I owe, true. Yeah, I owe a lot to him, uh, and I am well aware of it. Um, more like Alan wheelchair. <laughs> 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 Joe, do you ever think about like how did we get here with the booktube you mean or yeah in general? Like, like these people that we hold so near and dear we had no idea existed only yeah. a few years ago you I ever know. think about that yes it's it's surreal it is and i mean i honestly i always credit alan for i for my channel because he didn't 
actually, I didn't even tell him I was starting a channel. He wasn't the first person I told. And it was funny because when he found out, he all capped me <laughs> in Discord. Joanna, I didn't know you were starting a channel. But <laughs> but before that, I um, I credit him because when I found his channel, I thought, oh, wow, there's somebody around my age group who's doing, and I just like fell in love with all his videos and binged watched and back watched everything he, he um, put out. But he also, um, I don't know, for some reason, I felt comfortable commenting on his videos. And yeah. he, he commented back and somehow it just pulled me into the community. And I, hmm. up until then, I had just been a lurker. I would just lurk around. And so after that, then he, I started commenting on Philip's channel too, because I found Chil Philip's channel not like shortly after that. And Philip also was super gracious too. So yeah, it's really kind of surreal just then suddenly finding people. And then I started a channel and then I found your channel and it's just been amazing. It's amazing to, to find such wonderful people that you feel such an instant connection to. Yeah. And, you know, uh, meeting in person last yeah. year. I mean, that was wild as well. Like you're, you're a real person. I met you. That's crazy. <laughs> I know. Uh, I was thinking about that because we were talking in the airport too for a yeah, couple of hours. Talked to, at the end. We talked for a very long time. I was reading the God is not willing thinking that, you know, I got to beat Alan because he's going to rifle through this thing. And, uh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, I strained my eyes on that trip because uh, my husband and I went to Epcot. And while we were waiting in this, these very, very long lines, I just pulled out my phone and was reading The God is Not Willing on the, <laughs> on the Kindle app. And by the end of the day, my eyes were just on fire. It was like, okay, I, I need to get my prescription upgraded or something. <laughs> I would imagine so. Reading off the phone can be really rough. It was uh, rough. Yeah. I know yeah. some people, uh, some people do that. Like, that's how they read. They read just off their phone. And... I get it because like you're already going to be on your phone and you can kind of multitask and jump back in and stuff. So I'm not, I'm not shocked by it, but anytime that I've done it, usually it's whenever I'm like with family, like when I go from Christmas, a lot of times I'll load it up on my phone. So it doesn't look like I'm holding a Kindle, ignoring everyone. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be that guy, but I do want to get my reading in. Uh, yeah. And whenever I'm done, my eyes are toast, toast, my ghost, like done. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that funny? I, I don't know if you feel this way, but like if I'm with family, I always feel like I'm being rude if I pull out a book, even if everybody's just hanging around doing nothing. Yeah, I don't really but care people... anymore. What was that? <laughs> I, don't really, I don't really care. I used to think <laughs> I don't care anymore. Maybe I should get past that. I always feel like I'm being rude. But if I pull out my phone and just scroll through my phone, I don't know why that seems less rude, which it's totally rude. But <laughs> yeah. Also, have you ever pulled out a book in front of a group of people who don't read and then they always go, you know, I, I would read. I just I just don't know what it is. <laughs> It's like the, the default reaction to someone else reading is that they had to explain to you why they haven't read in the last 10 years. And it's like, it's fine. You don't have to. Like, yeah. it's okay. No. Yeah. yeah. Do you think, you know, talking about Alan and how much, you know, obviously we care about him and, and the kind of, you know, relationships you end up building over a community like this and, and being able to do these long form type content. Like, do, do you think that it is because the base of this is around reading? in literature do you think that that is part of that because like i've been a part of like groups and friends and stuff that like we talk about tv shows and stuff and that can lead to some really amazing conversation but i do feel like there's something more personal about reading that um like maybe it's because it's done in solitary so much and with tv shows a lot of times like people will do watch parties and, and other things like that um and maybe also the fact that some of the books we read aren't as popular and that it it feels like more of a connection when you find someone else that has read like our Scott Baker, for instance, like you're like, Oh my God, like you like this. Holy cow. I don't feel so weird now. Like, do you think that that has something to do with it? I, that's a really good question. Cause I, th well, I think so. I think because it is such a niche thing, but also with books, we all have our own, we could all have our own personal experience and interpretation. And so that just leads to rich discussion. So the way that you connect to a book, could be different than the way I do. And like right now we're reading Blood Meridian together and we're just having a blast because we're picking up on different details and sharing those and, you know, just kind of engaging in discussion and, you know, from different perspectives. Yeah. And different walks of life. Like the fact that you're actually basically from where Blood Meridian is taking place uh, yeah. <laughs> is pretty wild. And uh, like when you told me that I was like, wow, that has to be a trip because like you can probably at least imagine a little better than me with some of the of what these landscapes look like that he's describing in such poetic detail. Oh, I love that. Yes, because I grew up in the desert and I feel like 
with a lot of people who go to the desert and are not familiar with it, it can seem kind of like, for example, when I was living in Tucson, because I, I lived in Tucson for a while there, and I had some friends that were, I had a friend who moved there from Texas and one who moved from California there, or LA, and they both thought, oh, it's just dirty here. <laughs> I just thought it was just like <laughs> dirty and bland. And for me, I guess because I just have taken so much time to be in the desert that I just didn't see it that way at all. I, I were, right. where they saw it, everything being very bland, I saw like... I just saw so much detail and color and richness and intricate patterns. And I don't know, it, it was, it's something so different for me than it was for them. And I feel like you just haven't seen it right. <laughs> kind of like how we tell people you haven't read it right, you know, about books, but I feel that way about the desert. So when I read Mac um, McCarthy's writing of the desert, it just, it does something for me. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I, I really appreciate the fact that you have that that life experience and that you can kind of bring it to whenever we're talking about that because that is a big piece of the book. It, it, it is you know the landscape and, and what they're these these people in this band are putting themselves through and where they're going and it's a very unforgiving uh, you know place and setting. And uh, to think of what it might have been you know 100, 150 years ago, two hundred years ago is is crazy. Um, I, I also find the desert to be beautiful. I, I always have, uh, I got married out in the desert out in Red Rock in Vegas. And, uh, there's nothing like sundown in the desert. Yes. Nothing, like nothing, it. nothing like it. Yeah. And there's something so beautiful about like the openness of the sky. Cause like right now I live in Georgia and you just don't get as much sky here. It's just not the same. Really? Not nearly. Like when hmm. I'm in the Southwest, I feel like I'm just surrounded by sky it's it's just i don't know how to explain it like yeah it's, it's a little more spread out down there or out there too and the stargazing is absolutely incredible uh out in the desert oh yes yeah. absolutely yes and actually i i heard something about this because um in the first on the first page of blood meridian i'm sorry you guys i, I didn't mean to make this a total blood meridian discussion no nah, go there's for it something in there um, the Leonids, and I had watched on a video that the Leonids was actually a huge meteor shower that had happened on that specific year or that date that looked like, I guess there's artwork about it, that yes. it's, it's something very, very significant. And I was just trying to put myself in that mindset. Yeah, across all different types of people. So not just, uh, you know, obviously people going to the West at that point and whatnot, but also uh, Mexican tribes, indigenous tribes. There was a bunch of stuff um, in different recorded history about this meteor shower. And that is when the kid is born in Blood Meridian at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and, and I it, heard that that was um, the guy whose video I was watching said that that's exactly 100 years before McCarthy was born. Yeah. So just that weird is. coincidences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Coincidences. Um, I asked Steven Erickson about this once because I saw he answered on an AMA. Actually, no, I didn't get to ask him about it. Um, he was asked in an AMA if he believed in coincidences. And he said, as he gets older, he doesn't think so. What do you think about coincidences? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. So I saw that AMA um, and I saw him answer that question and it got me so curious. I, you know, that's a really challenging question. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have a friend who actually has um, a friend who has this whole podcast called the coincidence project and they're studying coincidences and how coincidences aren't coincidences. I haven't looked at it in detail, honestly. Um, I don't know. I think I tend to be curious. What about you? What do you think about coincidences? I think it's all random and nothing matters, but <laughs> that's not, that's not that very interesting of a, uh, of, of an answer. Yeah. So uh, I was curious what you thought. I, I thought Erickson's answer was uh, pretty profound, but I, I struggled to remember the exact context of it, but I like that question. I think that that's a, a good question to ask people and um, it can mean something totally different to each person. So yeah. Uh, I was kind of curious. It's so hard to tell. I mean, there, I mean, if I guess it could be all random, you know, at the same time, there are certain things that I look at in my life and I think that's really strange the way that worked out the way it did. I mean, really kind of weird little things in my life have lined up in certain ways that seem 
interesting that they were ran if they were random. Yeah. Like I didn't anticipate that <laughs> to work out that way. So yeah, for but sure. But I try to be I try to be open minded about it. You know, I mean, I'm I think I'm kind of open to I'm kind of open minded to it to coincidences, and I'm also open minded to the randomness, and maybe there's some truth in between. Yeah, I think that there's definitely room for um. To, to wiggle, <laughs> right? There's wiggle room there. Philip Chase says, I think the same, Jimmy. What a coincidence. Philip, you can leave. <laughs> you can <laughs> just leave after that. I can't believe you would say such a terrible joke. Um, it, it, it feels like uh, I'm dragging you into to very deep waters lately, though. I, I got you to read Blood Meridian. I, I would like to think that I had some impact on you reading R. Scott Baker. So I, yeah. are you doing okay? Are, are you still, oh, are you still I love a, that stuff. a ray of hope as you've oh. always been? Yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting because um, I know we've had a conversation before about how I'm, I tend to be team hope. <laughs> mm -hmm. I tend to like to land in a place of hope when it comes to books and literature and stories in general, just because I feel like hope lends itself towards um, a sense of expansion. And I feel like hopelessness mm -hmm. can sometimes, I mean, this could be oversimplistic, but maybe hopelessness is a little conclusive for me, kind of like certainty. If you look at certainty and uncertainty. Yeah. But um, but at the same time, I, I'm really enjoying these books. I, I'm thoroughly enjoying reading Blood Meridian. And it's right now I'm reading at the same time The Thousandfold Thought. And it's just fascinating to see to just I don't know, there's just a, a fascinating exploration. Cause like I was sharing with you earlier today, I could read a quote. I was reading a quote in the Baker book and then relating the theme explained there to themes I was that we were, you pointed out actually in Blood Meridian. And I was like, that's such a cool connection, you know? Yeah. So just seeing these different connections and seeing the influence too, because like we were also For talking sure. about how Red Country by Joe Abercrombie, you see the influences written all over it now. Like <laughs> especially the way things are described, like all the mud of like, oh man, this is so red country here so i just love those like nods those influences that you could see um obviously mccarthy influenced abercrombie not the other way around but it's just cool to see that yeah absolutely um i i also love like reading influences so like the fact that moby dick was so uh influential on mccarthy for blood meridian makes, that's why i decided to read moby dick in 2023 it'll be a very slow process but i'm gonna get through it um, John D says, Jimmy was wondering what your opinion on memory star and thorn is. I have multiple videos about memory star and thorn here on the channel. You can check out. Uh, I love memory star and thorn. I think it's one of the most important fantasy works, uh, the last hundred years, I would say. And I think that we owe a lot to Tad Williams. He's your favorite author's favorite author, most likely. And, uh, he will be here live on chatting with nuts next, next week. Tad Williams will be here. So, um, just to announce that again, we had a lot of chaos, but, uh, I am beyond excited to talk to Tad next week. I think it's going to be an excellent um, conversation. And I, I just feel really humbled the fact that he agreed to come on here and, you know, doing it live is something that not a lot of people are keen on doing. It can be very nerve wracking, but he, he had no issues. He said, sure. I'd love to meet your viewers. So <laughs> exciting. Congratulations on that. And also speaking of coincidences, I just have to point out that okay. the last time I was on chatting on chatting with nuts, you announced that you were going to have Steven Erickson as your next guest. So, so you <laughs> are, you are my guiding star to there we go. You're my precursor. I like this. You, you have, you've lined up everything perfectly. So the next one we're going to get, we're going to get George R. R. Martin on yep, right? that, just and, for you, Jimmy, just for yeah, you. Yes. We're gonna get him on and I'm going to make sure the schedule you write right before. So everything goes perfectly. Um, yeah, I I'm excited. I'm excited about, uh, you know, talking to one of my favorite authors. I, I think he's absolutely fantastic. I just finished Shadow March, uh, which is one of his lesser talked about series. I just finished uh, the first book. I shouldn't say I finished the whole thing. I finished book one. And I thought it was awesome. That was really cool. There's like a really cool uh, kind of lineage behind it or rather more history, I guess, about how it all came to be. And I'm, I'm excited to ask him about that next week, hopefully. And he's finishing up his last book in the uh, last King of Ostenar. So like he's finishing a massive, you know, accomplishment in a sequel in Ostenard series. So uh, 
I, I like catching authors. Like everyone talks to the author, you know, right before a book comes out, but we're getting, I'm going to be getting him like right after he has finished penning the rough draft and he's going through edits. You know what I mean? So it's like, wow. But what does that feel like to finish something like that? And he's been working on this series for like 20, 30 years at this point. So it's like, I can't imagine like what that feels like, you know? I can't imagine either. And he's definitely one of those authors I still need to read from. And I know you've sp spoken his praises before. I think I want to start with the standalone you reviewed. And I cannot remember the name now. Something Is it something with flowers? The War of the Flowers. It is. Uh, it's a good time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was like one of the first videos I saw of yours too. And yeah, I definitely want to, I think I want to start there. I think it's good to start sometimes with the standalone with authors, but I agree. But yeah. yeah, that's one, that's one of my main authors that I'm just, I have a feeling about, like, I don't know, I, I guess of the authors that I feel like are must read authors I haven't read from yet, Tad Williams for me, I just get such a strong feeling. And it's probably because of you, honestly, because I, yeah. I've gotten such a feeling from watching your videos. I'm like, I have a feeling I'm really going to resonate with his books. I just have such a strong feeling about it. Well, I, I always but, tell people when they want to reread Lord of the Rings, they should just read Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn for the first time instead, because I think that wow. that is like a natural progression. There, there's a lot of decades in between those two, but honestly, that wouldn't be a bad uh, palate cleanser for you after you get done with uh, Baker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tad is a lot more hopeful, a lot more hopeful, but he doesn't shy away from some of the things that, you know, um, that I appreciate people, you know, going through in the trials and tribulations and whatnot, but way less violent. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. D David Sloan asks, I know you mentioned not hearing back uh, from Robin Hobby for any more news on that front. No, but I do have new avenues that I am testing. So that's all I can say. And no guarantees, but God damn it. I'll try for you guys. I'll try. Cause I know it's funny because for me, it's just like, Oh my God, this is cool. But it's also awesome for the listeners because some of these, you know, some of these people don't do a lot of interviews or, or at least don't do them in a live format, you know? So, um, I know that you recently talked to a self pub author, right? Sons of Darkness, is that right? Oh yeah, Gurav Mohanty. Yes. So how was that experience? Was that the first time that you would talk to an author? No. Um, you mean like on my channel or yeah, on your channel? Yeah. Oh, on my channel. It is hmm. right. I I guess I I did have P.L. Stewart on my channel for a Why Read episode, but it wasn't really about his book so much. It was more about page chewing. Um, so I guess maybe, I don't know if that would count, but yeah, uh, as far as like an author focused type of video, that was definitely my first, um, I was in a discussion with, I've have been in discussions with authors on other people's channels, but not necessarily on my channel before. So yeah. Cause you've talked to Jenny Wartz, um, you've been a part of the Steven mm -hmm. Erickson chats, um, and Michael R. Fletcher was, I also had a discussion with him too. Mm -hmm. Oh, was that on Steve talks books? No, um, I had a discussion with him over on, I think it was on Nico's channel, Nico, I cannot remember Nico's channel name. I'm so sorry, Nico, <laughs> with Andrew's Wizardly Reads, because nice. we read the Obsidian Path trilogy. So that trilogy by Michael R. Fletcher, which I had a fun, I had a good time reading it. Honestly, it was really fun. So um, it was a good conversation. Yeah, that, that one's been recommended to me quite a bit. Um, that and Ash and Sand, which I've read the book one of that, and I enjoyed it, Kings oh, of Paradise. Yeah. I wasn't, I, it wasn't a perfect book for me, but I really liked it, and I'm going to finish the trilogy um, as long as book two delivers. Uh, and Michael R. Fletcher is one of um, the one of the ones that I've gotten a lot of recommendations for. But how do you feel whenever you talk to an author? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you do you get nervous or what, what, what's your vibe? I didn't feel nervous in this situation. Um, I'm not exactly sure why. <laughs> I just wasn't, but it was it was fun. Um, it was interesting because I, I wasn't really nervous about talking to him. I think more than anything, the book happened to be influenced on the Indian epic, the Maharabata. Hmm. And I hadn't read that before. And so I had some friends like Anita, who's in the chat there, and Angie, um, the bookaholic, and Philip Chase, because they all have read the Maharabata. So I was just very ignorant on the whole subject matter and a lot of the elements of Indian culture that are, I knew some things, but not as much as, of course, they did. So um, I, it was a learning experience for me. I'll say that. I did feel a little bit like, 
ignorant, <laughs> but it was fun. It was a good time. I mean, I always feel that way. Um, yeah. And then my goal at the end of it is to come out a little less ignorant, right? Yeah. <laughs> so in, yeah. in everybody wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was nice, though, because everybody made me feel very comfortable, like nobody made me feel dumb for not knowing things, because I didn't know a lot of things, but it was mm -hmm. really cool. And it was cool to see that influence in fantasy, because, you know, oh, it's yeah. a different part of the world, a different mm -hmm. culture, and we don't get to see that influence as much in fantasy. So that was fun. Yeah, this year has been largely like an Eastern influenced year for me as far as like Asian inspired stuff, um, you know, from Devin Madsen's We Ride the Storm uh, to Ken Liu and and many others. And I've, I've liked it. It's added a totally different perspective. Um, and just even how some of the characterization is done is like different in, in different regions. And I think it's I think it's important. And I think it's also good to expand those horizons because a lot of times people will pick up a book, uh, for instance, Three Body Problem. I just read uh, book one of that because it was one of my patron picks for this month. And I, I loved it. I thought it was just an outstanding book. But a lot of people said, you know, it's about the ideas and the concepts. The characters are like, eh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I disagree. I, I, I actually thought the characters were good. And like they had backstory. They had, you know, some of them talked about their family members and like who they were. And I ha was finding that I think once you get comfortable with psycho distance, in POVs, I think you can open yourself up to a totally different experience with the story. And uh, I, th I think it's pronounced six in Liu. I hope that's the, the correct way of pronouncing, which is the author of the three body problem, uh, you know, does have some distance from the POVs and you are like moving time and, and whatnot. But for me, it was interesting to, to jump into these people's heads during this time period of stuff happening in the, in the story. And it was like their personal traits and experiences were informing how they felt about the science that was being put forward. And this is something Ken Liu does very well in Dandelion Dynasty in the later books, in my opinion. You see generational changes and you see how um, a, lot, a lot of his trauma uh, from past books actually push forth engineering, push forth science and how those people interact with with science and progress. So it's like their philosophy, their personal philosophy is interacting with science. And I think that that is just an outstanding thing to explore. And I thought the three body problem, the first book did it in spades and I can't, everyone says book two and three is better. So like, I don't know. I just get, I, I, I get a little um, contrarian, I guess when it comes to when people are like, Oh, the characters are terrible in this book. And I just don't agree. I felt for these people. And, and it takes place during the 60s, which is the revolution in China. I mean, there's a lot there socially. So, yes, it's a commentary on the on, on the people and the civilization. But it, I thought it went down to the personal level just fine for me. So I that actually that trilogy has been super high on list of sci fi books and tril or trilogies I want to read. I got excited when I saw that on your TBR. I thought, oh, I want to read that. It's been so highly recommended to me. And, uh, you know, it's interesting what you said about the characters, because I feel like I don't think characters, it's just interesting. I, I, like, for example, with Dune, the Dune, um, mm -hmm. the Dune books, I, I, the I tend Dune. to think that in <laughs> Dune books, <laughs> I tend to think like, I mean, I know that they're considered somewhat flat characters, but I don't think that characters have to be necessarily rounded out for yeah. you to care about them. I agree. I, I found like with those characters, I was just completely fascinated by them, like completely fascinated by them. This was true, at least for the first three books. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have to be an in, in, in intimate, like with the character at all times anymore. I used to be that way. And that's why I love like Abercrombie. I love Hob and, and I will go to those things when I want it, but it doesn't have to be mandatory for me to enjoy a story or to connect with character. And I think that maybe that's just part of reading broadly, possibly, or yeah. maybe it's just me and my subjective taste. And uh, Amanda Serenity is saying that I read three body problem in two to three days. It was two days. And it's the <laughs> one of the fastest I've ever read a book. Um, and Josh says that three body problem was tough for me. I felt like I was reading a translation lost uh, translation, lost something. And I actually agree with this. I do think that some of the prose and the writing is clunky. It's not very imaginative writing, 
but I was still able to connect with the people. So like, I'm not over the moon about the, the pros per se, but it doesn't really matter. Like ideas, mm -hmm. the concepts. And I do think that like the emotional human attachment to the civilization uh, was driving me at a ridiculous pace with that book. I just, I could not put it down for the life of me. I just yeah. could not. <laughs> yeah. It's really interesting the way authors are able to do that. I know Jake yeah. Bishop, he did a video on, authors and what they do really well. It, it was a video he posted just yesterday, I think. Yeah. And he was talking about how, he was actually talking about how Frank Herbert, if you read some of his dialogue, it doesn't sound, probably doesn't sound that great when you read it out loud, but it's the way he frames the dialogue, the way that he sets it up and the, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess the way the omniscient narrator works around the dialogue that gets it to be so impactful yes. and so interesting. And so- yeah, yeah, it works for me. Yeah, I, I, I actually love his use of the third person omniscient. And whenever I think about third person omniscient, that's one of the first people that I think of. And there are a little bit of there's a little dryness to Frank Herbert's works. And uh, I think that comes from the fact that I believe he was a journalist or a reporter prior to to getting into writing fiction. I may I may be incorrect on that, but I think I'm right. Um, and I bet you him having to listen to multiple sources and like be around conversations and then report on it actually helped him probably formulate those group conversations and dialogue. I guarantee wow. it had to have some sort of effect, right? Cause you have to build that conversation in a report or in, in, in a newspaper article. Right. So I yeah. imagine that that probably informed his process quite a bit. And I feel like that works really well for sci-fi and like that yeah. sort of futuristic setting and stuff like that. So that makes perfect sense to me. That, that's me. I didn't know that. Yeah, it is interesting, right? That like uh, two of the grandfathers of science fiction, when you look at like Asimov and Frank Herbert is like, they do have kind of like, you know, I don't want to say cardboard prose because I think that's a lot more insulting than it needs to be. But it, it, it is not the most imaginative writing as far as like style goes, right? And, and alliteration or any of these things. And that kind of shaped the science fiction idea of like what writing a science fiction book looks like. And there have been people that along the way that have played with that. I mean, obviously Dan Simmons did. Dan Simmons wrote in a very different way. So I'm not saying that there's only one way to do it, but much like Tolkien writing very beautiful, lyrical, descriptive uh, fantasy uh, informs decades of writing that. And still to this day, people are trying to emulate that whenever they write a fantasy book. And people think like that is fantasy. It's just interesting that like if it had went a little different, like and they were flipped for, per se, right? Like that would be a very interesting genre switch if, if we had that. Um, but it just shows how influential those titans were in, in their respective genres, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think like AP did a really good, uh, he did a really great video on prose and how you, how you evaluate good prose from bad prose. And the way he described it, if I'm remembering right in front of that video, because it was a while ago, he was, he was comparing it to like a soundtrack. So if you, the way you would do that is like, if the soundtrack, if the, the word usage and the flow to it fits that world and that setting and mm -hmm. maybe that character psychology. And that of course goes into tone and everything, then that's effective prose. But if it, there's like a clash with the writing style and the sort of setting, mm -hmm. then that can be, yeah, I think that I, I can sense that sometimes when I'm reading and I'm like, I don't know if I'm reading something that's supposed to be like high epic fantasy, but it just comes across or even grim dark or dark fantasy and it just comes off cartoony. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that could work sometimes, but sometimes I'm like, there's something off here. It seems cartoony. I don't know. Yeah. And it's all very like subjective too, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, depending on what you're visualizing even, or what words stick out to you in, in the book. So I, I've, I'm a big fan of like style fitting the, the vibes of a book. Like that's something I look for and try to comment on in my reviews as much as possible, because to me, that's the stuff that I pick up on. So I feel like that's the stuff I'm confident talking about. Yeah, that's something that I really enjoy in a review is if somebody is able to capture explaining the tone of a book, because I think mm -hmm. that's a very unique feature that certain authors can bring to the forefront in their writing. Yeah, yeah. So some some uh, books I read and, and, you know, it's a story and then sometimes uh, it's just dripping in atmosphere. It's dripping yeah. in setting. And, and I think McCarthy and Baker are probably really good examples of that, not to continuously push those here no, tonight. But, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. 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 yeah.
Um, uh, someone asked, Connor said, uh, how is the Patreon 2K Words Month going one weekend? Uh, I'm killing it. I'm already in the third book. I'm in The Wolf by Leo Carew. And I am just, I've hit like a, a just a pace, man. Like I am reading, I'm loving it. Uh, even books that I'm not like loving, loving, like I'm just getting a lot out of it. Uh, I'm in a groove right now and you gotta, when you get the itch, you gotta scratch it and I'm scratching it till it's raw. So we're going to keep palling through. And the last one I finished was of blood and fire by Ryan Cahill. It's a self pub Epic fantasy. I believe it's a trilogy. I think, um, I thought, uh, I don't know if I'll do a full review, but I'll probably do a pretty in-depth, uh, discuss, not discussion, but like an overview of what I thought about it in my wrap up that comes out at the end of the month. And just so you know, I thought it was okay. I thought it was fine. Um, it wasn't my favorite read. Um, there's things I like about it. There's things that I don't like about it. I think that there's an audience for it and I can see a lot of people enjoying this. If you loved faithful in the fallen and you wanted some more of that with more fantasy elements, I think that a blood and fire would probably work for a lot of people. Um, but I have a lot of other stuff to say about it, but I don't want to get into it here. Um, but yeah, I think there's an audience for it for sure. I just don't know if I am that audience. You know what I mean, Joanna? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I always feel that way. I'm like, I'm just not the right audience for certain things. Yeah. Or the right time, right? Like yeah. sometimes you can run into oh, something. Oh yeah. Yeah. I thought about doing that, like doing a video at some point about books that I read at the right time. Yeah. You know, or that, that just the timing hit me at the right exact right time. You yeah. That way. Oh, definitely. Like if I had tried to read Malazan or Hob before I did, I think I would have been in trouble. Um, but you know, the reason why I read shadow March by Williams, Tad Williams, uh, a couple weeks back is because I had like some time before the month began and I did the craziness in December. So I was like, I want something like high stakes and epic fantasy. And I was like, who does that? Like, who can I know is just going to do that? Well, like it doesn't need to be the most inventive. I was like, Tad Williams, Tad Williams, of course it'll be him. <laughs> and I was right. Like it, it's, it was the exact thing I want. It's like whenever you're craving a food or whatever it might be yeah. and you eat it and you're just like, this is exactly what I wanted. And that's yes. what I got. Yeah. Uh, it's so interesting. Cause it's like the more you read, the more, you know, exactly which book or author is going to scratch that itch for you. Yeah. Do you feel like you have way more of a grip on your taste now or are things still surprising you often? Um, that's a really good question to some degree, to some degree, but at the same time, uh, I mean, for the most part, yeah, for the most part, I think I'm getting a better sense of what my taste is. Um, mm -hmm. at the, you know, I guess I, I, like I said, with Blood Meridian, I kind of picked that up slightly on a whim. I mean, I had heard so many incredible things about it from you and from others, and so I don't know, it's interesting. Somebody asked me in my comment section on a recent video about whether I take less risks with my reading because I um, I did a video on why I avoid DNFing books. <laughs> I try to as much as possible. And so they've said, and, and I did mention in the video that as a result of trying to be careful about, about that, about not wanting to DNF books, I am a little more cautious about what I pick up. I really want to make sure that I, I'm going to want to be there for the whole journey if I pick up yeah. a book. Um, but at the same time, this last year, when I think back, I have taken a lot of risks in a way, or I have mm -hmm. read a lot of books that were kind of weird <laughs> or different <laughs> or, you know, just kind of outside what I'd normally read. And they've all been winners, almost every single one. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I uh, become pretty curious, like I you know, I like certain things that, uh, in every book that, that comes along, but there are times where I just kind of want to take a, a left turn and the Patreon random pick has been key for this. Oh, like yeah. the vanished birds by yeah. Simon Jimenez. It was Evie's pick. That book was absolutely fabulous. I wouldn't have picked that book up for 10 years. Like there's just, it just didn't call to me. Yeah. And then I read it and I was like, this is fantastic. Like, I think this is good literature. And now I really want to read uh, that the, he, he wrote a different book and I, I can't remember what it's called now. And somebody put it in there. It's like something about water, I think. But, uh, you know, that's like a new author that I'm like, is totally on my radar. And I was even thinking about um, uh, P. Dejali Clark's A Master of Jinn and 
the fact that I read his short stories and stuff like this, uh, Haunting of Tramcar 015, I think it's called. But he has another uh, story, short story called Ring Shout. And supposedly it's fantastic. And like these yeah. are just things this year that I got kind of thrown at me. And I would have never read those things. So I think I'm still taking risk, even though I know what kind of makes me ticks a tick as a reader. Mm -hmm. But you know what's weird? Part of me wants to try. And this isn't this isn't something I would do like a lot of, but like I want to read the best YA that there is. YA fantasy. Like I want someone to give me the best YA fantasy and I want to read it with a good mindset and just see what I think. Because like I'm not interested in YA to be honest with you. Like a lot of the tropes that they use and stuff, it's just not for me. Um even like Hunger Games and stuff, like I just never got into it. So it's like one of those things where I'm like I kind of want to go back with a different lens and try something like that. And I'm doing that with the classics now too. Like I'm going to try to read Moby Dick. I want to read um um I'm already forgetting all the other ones I have up, but there's other ones that I have that I also want to read like war and peace, for instance. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I kind of want to take a little more risks in 2023, but that's going to be pretty damn hard considering that I'm in the middle of, I don't know, 15 to 20 series. Yeah. Yeah. That's really hard. I think my biggest issue with YA is that I was reading a lot of YA for a while there and I enjoyed a lot of it, but I kept finding that, Oh, his dark materials. That's all yeah, my I have heard great things about that. I have heard yeah. great things about his dark materials. I think my biggest issue with um, with YA is that every single YA series I've read, almost every single one, I've just lost interest in the second book. Like, <laughs> yeah, I kept thinking this should be a standalone. I felt like they were just almost going out of their way to drag out the story. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it's just in my head, but every single one, I'm like, I'm just done. <laughs> <laughs> after book two I'm like mm, yeah i don't think i could get along with like a long series i don't think that's gonna happen um I, this is interesting uh the first three earthsea books are why so i read the first three earthsea books this year mm. and i guess you could probably i don't know there's some really interesting stuff in there that's kind of deep like she explores taoism quite a bit oh, um yeah that doesn't you, surprise me you need to read some some earthsea have you I read know. earthsea no, I have not read Ursula K. Le Guin yet. That's another author that's on my must read list. I am probably yeah. going to reread um, Ursi next year as well. And I, oh. I have, there's a couple other things in Ursi that I need to read, but I, I really want to do a, a video kind of about all of Ursi and in a non spoiler fashion, just talk about how formative I think it is and like how important it is. Um, you know, I always give Tad a lot of praise, but I think Ursula. Le Kayla Gwynn is criminally underrepresented yeah. in book tube, at least. Um, obviously there's plenty of awards and stuff that she's been granted and people in the literary community acknowledge her, but I just think that she's really special and I, I can't wait to read her sci-fi like left hand of darkness, yeah. the dispossessed, like all that stuff's yeah. definitely up there. And uh, I agree with you, Josh Ramirez it says tombs of a tune is by far the best sequel ever written. So I don't know if I would say it's my favorite or the best, but it is, my favorite or book. And I thought it was excellent. Mm. You want to talk about, you want to talk about um, atmosphere, Joanna tombs of a two and has some atmosphere. I love atmospheric reads. So I'm sure I'll love it. Um, and speaking of atmosphere, I think another YA, a YA series I did love um, the trilogy winter night trilogy by Catherine. Wait, am I getting the author name, right? I have to make sure. I I, I, Catherine Miller, maybe I, I think I have those books actually. Catherine Arden, Catherine Arden. Yeah. yeah I, okay. Yeah. I have those. Those are great for winter too. That's like a great Christmassy kind of atmospheric fairy tale-esque read. And I would, I would definitely, I know people get mad when I say this, but I would definitely consider those YA because they're coming of age. They are following a young protagonist. Um, no. Yeah. I, I, I consider those YA, but I thought they were fun. I like them. Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot out there that I, I really want to try. And if I had to do like a five star prediction video for you, because I'm, I'm betting pretty well right now with you. I think you would absolutely adore Tombs of a Tuan. I think I think you would like maybe possibly love Wizard of Earthsea, but I think book two Tombs of a Tuan you would latch on to. I really do. All right. All right. I'll put it down. I'll put They're it also down. Also only like 180 pages. That's not bad. No, that's yeah. perfect. <laughs> if you're trying if you're trying to shave down the page count that is the way to go um 
between that and black company, you could have like 20 books read and be like, yeah, I read, a, I read a ton this year and only have like a couple thousand pages. It's not so bad. Yeah. Yeah. I tend to love, um, atmospheric reads and I love especially books that, I don't know, like you said that you were going off the deep end with Mer Blood Meridian and Baker. I do love books like that, that kind of take you off the deep end a bit. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Andy says he, he thought it was just good, not great. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't agree with the Narnia-esque at all. Um, really, Andy, he said three and a half stars. Um, listen, <laughs> Andy, Andy disappears for like years at a time. Who cares Andy. what Andy has to say? <laughs> Who cares? Andy, aren't you supposed to be campaigning for re-election already? Isn't that how politics is? Like you win and then you immediately <laughs> have to start started. Off. Yeah. It's damn ridiculous. Um, also ask, have you two read any franchise fiction like Dragonlance or 40K? I have not, but I am definitely interested in both. Um, one thing is, is it's always really hard to figure out where to start, at least with 40K, because I think there's different arcs. I think Dragonlance is a little more straightforward where to start. Mm -hmm. um, so you have not done these? I, I read, um, is Dragonlance, is that the Dra Dragons of Autumn Twilight? Is that the first, am I thinking of the right series? Uh, the Tracy Hickman, Margaret yeah. Rice. Is I that... believe so. I believe yeah, so. I did read that book last year for a buddy read. And unfortunately, I, it just didn't quite work for me. Um, and I can't, and that's the thing. And I know you and I have talked about wanting to understand more when a book or why a book isn't working for you. And that was one where I just like, I could not quite grasp why that book did not work for me, but it just I really struggled getting into it. Like hmm. it wasn't a hard read. <laughs> it's a very easy read, but I don't know. Something about it just didn't click for me. Yeah. I mean, that, that can always happen. Uh, I, I feel like 40 K is pretty interesting to me because there's a lot that goes on in there and some pretty wacky uh world building so i feel like 40k would probably be a hit for me and then the dragonland stuff so classic i think i'd have to be in the mood for that yeah yeah it might have been it felt to me kind of campy 80s movie fantasy mm. type of thing <laughs> which i usually can be there for because like i love the never-ending story for example by michael enda mm -hmm. um but something about it, I don't know what it was. I, I kind of want to reread it in a way just to see if I could figure it out or force myself to like it or something. Or I don't know. It bothers me so much. It bothers me so much if I can't pinpoint why I don't resonate with a book or yeah, I feel like I have to know why. It's weird. Is there a book that you did not enjoy in the past and it doesn't have to be this year. It could be at any point that you want to get like, what's the one that you want to go back to the most thinking that maybe you would like it now, or maybe just to give it another shot. Mm, there was one that was coming to mind the other day. Oh, what was it? Well, one of them is dead house gates. I would love to reread dead house gates mm. with a different mindset because I did not know what I was getting into when I picked up Dead House Case. <laughs> I did not know that we were going to be on a new continent with a whole new cast of characters. I didn't know anything. I just was too ignorant when I went into that book. Um, and so it was, a, it was an adjustment. And at the same time, like I could still vividly remember certain things about that book. Like they stayed with me so much. So I don't know. It's weird. Uh, but there were a couple of other ones. I know Slaughterhouse Five was a book that was weird for me because it was exactly what I was expecting. Like everything about it was exactly what I was expecting. And I appreciated the book, but I didn't really enjoy reading it for some reason. Mm. And I still think it's an, I understand why it's some people's favorite book of all time. Like I totally get it, but it just didn't quite click with me. And another one that I think if I reread it and I, I I'd feel differently about, this is the book would be McCarthy's no country for old men. Because I think hey. I told you I read that about 11 years ago and I didn't really, um, yeah, I just, I just didn't really, I, I, I liked it okay. I just didn't get why it was so popular. I just couldn't understand mm -hmm. that. And I never saw the movie. I, I have only seen clips of the movie, um, though I know what all the actors look like somehow. Like I know exactly what they look like. And for someone who doesn't have a lot a lot of capacity for remembering people's faces and stuff. It's kind of weird that I remember that. Um, you know what book I really want to give another shot to? And it, this was an expectations one. I went into it not knowing what it was. <laughs> and uh, it's Goblin Emperor by, I think, Catherine Addison. Is, oh, is, yeah. is that her name? Yeah. I so I went into it. that. One, it's 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 a it's a darling. Like people just love that book. 
So I went into it then goblin emperor. Like, it's going to be a, just a silly like goblin dude running around telling people what to do. Like I thought it would maybe be a, like a secession story that was like really like low to the ground. Like I don't know. I don't I don't know what I was expecting. But then you, know, you start reading it, it has like royal speech in it like we and you know what I mean? Like it just the prose was very dense and beautiful, but I didn't want that at that moment. Like it was like one of those things where I had like four or five days left in a month and I was like, OK, I'll just fit this in. It's a standalone. Perfect. Everyone loves this book. And I read like the first 120 pages and I was like. Nah, and I just DNF it and I donated the book. Oh, um, wow. yeah. yeah, I've heard, I've heard mixed things, though. I've heard some people not, not click with that book. I think with the right expectations, I would love it. I think I could go into it and I think that it is it, you know, it's a bit of a slice of life type deal. So, and I love those. Yeah. But I didn't want that at that moment. <laughs> so it's just, that, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. I want to get that one back, man. I, I want to get it back. I also kind of want to read the Raven tower by Anne Leckie again, because I hated it so much. Like it's my least <laughs> favorite. It's probably my least favorite book I've ever read. And I'm like, maybe it isn't as bad as I thought it was. I think I remember you talking about this. Was this recent that you talked about? I, I try thing? to mention it at least once a podcast just to make sure people know. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. Somebody was mentioning Fight Club earlier, and I, I read that earlier this year. I I did not like that book, but at the same time, it was cool reading it because I totally did. I didn't like it at all, and I appreciated it at the same time i was like i totally th i think this author did a great job i just hate that part of cult pop culture <laughs> i just hate that whole section of pop culture and the whole theme and yeah i hate i hate it <laughs> but at the same time i thought it was well written and well executed it was yeah. cool yeah sometimes you can have an appreciation for something i mean i kind of said about blood meridian when i finished it i was like i i read it and i was like <laughs> I see why people like it, but then it grew, you know, it grew on me. It kind of challenged me. Um, Shelly says, hi, Jimmy. I agree with you on the pariah. I DNF'd it because I thought the book was so boring and I don't like the direction it was going. I probably would have DNF'd it if it wasn't a Patreon pick. I try to, I don't think I've ever DNF'd a Patreon pick. I try oh. not to. I try not to. Um, I try to give it the full fair shake. Yeah. It's a lot different whenever it's something I've picked. I can just throw it down now. I know you're, uh, you know, you do not DNF. That is against no. your religion, but. Oh, <laughs> well, I didn't say that. I didn't say I would never DNF and that I, the problem is that I went through most of my life DNFing and DNFing and DNFing and DNFing. So I probably DNFed more than most people on booktube. <laughs> so you're recovering DNF. I'm a recovering DNFer. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so this is kind of me trying to swing this pendulum the other way and having found some rewards along the way, but I don't, but I feel like I'm the same as everyone else. And that I think the one thing that we're all trying to avoid is the reading slump. And for everybody, they mm -hmm. DNF in order to avoid the reading slump for me, what I, according to my past, if my past is any indication of truth, um, which it might not be, but if it is, I, my past has told me that DNFing puts me in a reading slump. So, <laughs> so mm. that's, that, that's my weird psychology about that. No, I kind of get what you mean. Like, there's nothing worse than whenever you get the wind taken out of your sails when you're reading. And sometimes, like, the, I don't know. I don't know. Is it worse to DNF or to push through and not like it? You know, that that's a tough one for me. I don't know. Well, I mean, what I learned was I did push through a book I was not liking, which was, oh, my cat is meowing, um, was the, blast, <laughs> the Glass Feed Game by Herman Hess. And... I had, I felt like I had to finish it because it was given to me from a mentor friend. And when I finished it, I did actually, I was actually grateful. I read it and I actually found even some passages that touched my heart. That's another book that I think I might reread someday. I think I had just the wrong expectations going into it, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Cause I really do feel that way. Like even fight club, even books, slaughterhouse five. And, and well, I mean, I appreciated slaughterhouse five. I shouldn't put it in the same camp. Even Jade City, because I did not like Jade City. Uh, I feel like I can find things to appreciate in books, almost every book that I've gotten through. And I don't know, I find some value in being able to find value in things that I don't even like all the time. Yeah, and I think also like because we do reviews or discussions and stuff, I think that at least I, I think of it this way and no one else has to. But for me personally, I do like to always approach it from the idea of like, OK, well, if it's not for me, who is it for and who and how can we talk about this? 
Uh, one of those things happened to be um, the ninth, uh, ninth rain by Jen Williams. It was a book that I, I somewhat enjoyed, but it, I was like convinced. I'm like, this is something that a lot more people would like other than me. And I ended up DNFing book two, and I don't think I'll continue the series, but I'm glad I read it. And, I, and I'm glad that I put forth the brain power to try to figure out why it didn't work for me, but also to see why it works for other people. And I don't know. I think that helps refine your taste a little bit. And I, we kind of talked about this before offline, but yeah. I've done a, we're almost doing this for three years. At least I have. And it's like, I've gotten really good at identifying why I like something like why I like a turn of a phrase or why I like an author style or whatever it might be. The harder thing now. And the thing I'm going to be working towards now is trying to um, articulate why something doesn't work. For yes. me. Uh, and also maintaining respect for the work that I think it deserves. And, and that's a fine line, right? Saying, Hey, I don't like this, this, and this, but you might. Um, and I, I hate always having to qualify stuff like that, but I think it's important too, because, uh, when you're trying to do a review or whatever, you know, I think you got to present it in somewhat of an omniscient perspective while throwing on, you know, your own feelings, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I think that there's incredible value in that and being able to find that, figure out what that is. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I was, it's, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting topic. I could probably mm -hmm. go off on that, but I probably won't <laughs> right now, but. I mean, you feel free, go for it. That's why oh, you're here. Well, I was just thinking, cause I, 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 this is kind of like a side tangent, but I was watching this, this, this video the other day, um, where this guy was talking about, and I love the video because it related so much to the new series I started on my channel called Why Read? Mm -hmm. Because I I feel like, um, and this also kind of relates to me, I think with the DNFing thing to some degree. So the person was talking about Aristotle and I was going to ask Alan about this because I, I feel kind of like this is out of my ballpark to talk about Aristotle because I haven't studied Aristotle in so many years. Mm -hmm. But he was saying that according to Aristotle, you know, there's that saying, the ends justify the means. Um, well, according to Aristotle's way of thinking about things, that's not the best strategy to think about the ends justifying the means, that you should really be thinking about why you're doing something and finding the meaning in what you're doing while you're doing it, and then decide from that vantage point if it's worthwhile. And he was saying that our society today is very much programmed like that. Like we're all operating on that philosophy and we're not even conscious of it. Like we've all been influenced by that way of thinking. In fact, like if you hear about morality tests and I've even heard Alan rant about this on his channel, like, no, the ends do not justify the means <laughs> that like, you know, that's almost like a poisonous way of looking at things like the ends justify the means. It's almost like how people justify doing horrible things. Um, but I just thought it was interesting to think about that, to think about how that affects even our reading culture, like yeah. if we're not invested immediately and engaged immediately, then I'm going to DNF and I'm going the extreme way with this. And I'm not saying you're, I'm not trying to accuse anybody because I understand this is a hobby. You're doing this for fun. Yeah, for sure. You don't want to waste your time. But at the same time, it's like, I think we're also maybe slightly motivated by like, I need to be kind of gratified in the moment. Otherwise this isn't worth my time. And we're not here for, it's no longer a thinking of, and I think in the past, it could have been different. Like in the past, our culture could have been thinking in regards to the ends justify the means. I need to get through this eight to five job because at the end of the day, it's going to bring home the paycheck. And some people do have to operate that way. But I think a lot of people, they're, it, I feel like that's sort of getting changing in our culture. I don't know. And it's just a guess. I don't know if that's a fact, but. So you say changing as in you feel like people are, are living in the moment more mm -hmm. or like we're wanting more like this to matter now versus yeah. thinking long-term huh. going through the struggle in order to get the future gain. Yeah. I think there's a reward for that. Like I think hard things generally do present the biggest rewards. Um, I kind of have operated on that assumption my whole life i think um like jujitsu for instance is very difficult 
is sometimes it's really hard to show up. <laughs> like you just don't want to. And you go through these months where you're just the, you know, hammer nail and you're the nail and you're like, this isn't fun. And then all of a sudden you realize you're like, oh, now I'm getting a purple belt. And you're just like, wow, you know, wow. you kind of fall in love with the process. You know, you start thinking about the goals, but eventually you're just showing up because it's what you do. And you take things away, even if they're negative, right? Like you take it away. Well, hey, at least I did a good job in this one spot. And I think with, with at least with BookTube and with my, with the YouTube channel, it's like, um, I remember reading early, like really, really early in the first like six months of my channel, I would read and I'd be like, how am I going to do a review on this? How am I going to state that bubble? And I would always be worried about it. And I felt like I had to review everything I read, you know, everything I read has to be this, uh, big review, big video. And I just like kind of decided that that wasn't sustainable. And I was like, I'm going to just read as if I don't have a channel. And when I have something to say, I will turn my camera on. And that's why I was really inconsistent. Plus a bunch, bunch of other stuff too. But like, you know, my first year on YouTube, it was very sporadic at times because I didn't have that. But then as I kept reading and sticking with books that maybe I didn't have a lot to say about, I started finding things out about myself that helped me then talk about books. And still to this day, I don't review everything I read. You guys all know that. But I think that's part of it too, was like, I had to stop thinking about the review. I had to stop thinking about the end goal of like finishing the series. I got finished this series. And it was like, let's just read and let's like live in the moment, live page by page and pick it apart. And I actually think uh, McCarthy has taken that to another level for me where my pledge for 2023 is to read slower. Like there, there's some books that I don't think warrant a glacial pace, but if I am really loving something, I feel like it is definitely beneficial to slow down and fight the urge to maybe binge on. And I wish I had done that with our Scott Baker's work more. And I wish I would have done that with Malazin a little bit more um, because those are works. I think that, you know, deserve that time. And uh, yeah, so that that's kind of my thinking on it, is that I do feel like I don't know about society, but for me, <laughs> I, I definitely I mean. find myself happier whenever I approach things in the moment. Yeah, no, I love that. And I think that's beautiful about martial arts, how you were connecting it to that. Have you ever had, and I'm sure you could apply this to, to book, to reading a book too, but specifically in martial arts, I'd be curious, like, have you ever had a flow experience where you just feel in the flow, like you're in the zone? And you're not having to think through every move and it's just coming through you. Have you ever had any experience like that before? Yeah, I think that's kind of embraced a lot, especially in jujitsu. Um, they call it the gentle art, which is bullshit. Uh, it's not gentle at all. It's very maniacal and just like downright painful. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I always go into um, you know sparring with the idea that I'm going to just be and i'm just going to do what i know how to do and not force things and and like just let it come to me and i think that's the beauty at least for me in like jujitsu like it's whenever i don't ha i'm putting a forth very little effort and the other guy's exhausted that is the best feeling in the world yeah you know, you know or you let yourself get into a very disadvantaged position and then work your way out of it because you know what you're doing and you're expending extraordinarily like low amounts of energy that is winning to me like that is mm -hmm. so that's probably the closest i would say to flow state that that i've ever been um it's hard to be in flow state when you're being strangled <laughs> <laughs> that's totally true yeah the, the, this so flow theory is a theory that was i guess it's been around for a long time, but the person who is most famous for um, for writing about it and studying it, I guess, in a research way is this uh, Hungarian author, and I'm going to butcher the name, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like Csikmetszi Hai, kind of, I don't know, it's a weird name. But anyway, on. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Hungarian, actually. Ah, well, I'm, <laughs> perfect. No, a false claim. <laughs> I have the book over there, but yeah, he studied this, uh, he, he basically broke down this experience that people would have whenever they feel like a sense of flow, like a runner's high, like you're running and suddenly you just feel like you're just in a flow, like almost effortless. Like there's like an adrenaline, but there's like a, almost like a uplifting experience with it or people mm -hmm. who are rock climbing and they feel one with the mountain, they feel one with the rock and everything. It's almost like time stands still for a second. And he talks in this book about the components that lead to a flow experience. 
So one of them, for example, is that when you have a flow experience or if you're lost in a book, I think you could have a flow experience reading a book. So like you're so immersed in the book, it's almost like the book is reading itself. You don't feel like you're putting any effort. It's just kind of happening. You're just like the next thing you know, you look up like, oh, wow, I'm in my room and an hour went by. How did that happen? And so this experience is something we can have in our lives in all activities. There have been people that I mean, he even talks about you know, uh, Frankel, uh, man's search for meaning, how Victor Frankel had these experiences, even in prison, like in a concentration camp, like you can have them anywhere. You don't have to be doing a specific activity, but there are certain components of a flow experience that can lead to that experience. So like, one is that um, goals are attainable. So you know what the next step is, maybe the next chapter, maybe the next move you feel like you're in control of your circumstances and you have a loss of self-consciousness. So you're not like thinking through everything. You're just sort of in the moment, in Mm -hmm. the experience. There's no real sense of, I am Joanna reading a book. It's like, I am just in the book, you know, it's one thing. And, and And feedback is immediate. Like that's another thing that you feedback is immediate. So there's, there's different types of things that can lead to a flow experience. But one thing that I found really interesting about these flow experiences, because I think that's something a lot of us want. These are things, and he talks about that, like flow experiences in cooking or lovemaking or whatever it is like that you want to do with your time. Um, You could have a flow experience doing anything. But one of the things that usually is a factor in leading to a flow experience is an investment of time and effort. They don't usually just happen automatically. There usually is some amount of time and effort that's involved before the flow experience can start to emerge. Hmm. So you don't right away just pick up a book and flow into the book. You know, you have to learn how to read first and learning how to read takes time and it's effort. And man, tell that to my um, my young niece <laughs> who just doesn't want to learn how to read because it's, it's, it's hard, you know, to take the time and effort to do that when you yeah. could be like playing with dolls instead. I mean, I will say that I think realm of the elderlings was a flow experience for me. Like I would just melt into buck keep and just be like, what's going on. Yeah. What, what's my boy fits up to. Like I just, yeah. Specifically the fits books too. Cause I, I like, I love live ships and then rain wild chronicles is a thing, but like, the Fitz books specifically, I just felt like I was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a wonderful experience. I would also say that my first, um, my first read through for a song of ice and fire a long time ago was a flow of very Me much. Too. that. Now yes. I, now I go into it with a different mindset and different goals every time I go through it. But the yeah. first time I read through that, I was just in Westeros and I was just engulfed. Same here, actually. And that actually is also part of my reading journey with fantasy. Yes, that's the name. <laughs> and I can't say it right. Chick Zenmehai. I cannot say it right. I'm sorry. <laughs> you almost got there. It is hard, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. But I had that. That was actually part of it, too. Because like when I read um, A Song of Ice and Fire, when I read Game of Thrones, the first, when I read the Game of Thrones, I remember... I, I was really new to adult fantasy at the time. And mm-hmm. I, well, it had been a while. I was in a long, long reading slump with fiction in general. And I hadn't read adult fantasy in a few years. And I felt like the people who loved that series that I knew were way smarter than I was. So I told myself, I'm just going to go very slowly. I'm going to take as much time as possible to get to know the names. I'm not going to rush it. I'm just going to take my time and be as patient as possible. And I'm going to give myself at least 100 pages. My goal was just to get through 100 pages and just see what it was like. I got to like page 88 or something. It was the chapter with Bran when Bran is exploring uh, the castle, you Mm -hmm. know, and that was when I fell in love, like Bran's chapter. As soon as I was with Bran, I was like completely immersed. (laughs) I was totally in love. And after that, I just... I kind of actually set that as my marker. I'm like with adult fantasy, I'm going to just at least try to give this book a hundred pages. And usually I'm going to read the rest of the book by the time I get through a hundred pages anyway, but I'll never forget that experience. Yeah. It's definitely something special. Uh, Momentum Unbound says it's Mihai uh, Chick Sen Mihai. <laughs> Mihai Chick Sen Mihai. Mihai yeah. Chick Sen. I had, I, I had a, Somebody try to explain this to me too. Like they really went through the diction of that name. 
And I really struggle with it still. The challenge. <laughs> one. Um, Fans Fanatic asked this question said, have you heard of the Dark Tower News, Jimmy? Thoughts? So, yeah, I, Joanna, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Mike Flanagan is going to be producing a Dark Tower TV series for Amazon Prime, which if it was just Amazon Prime, folks, I would not be excited. <laughs> I'd be like, eh, it's probably not going to go well. But Mike Flanagan, I feel like his goal in life has been to make a Dark Tower series, and he has such an impressive track record, minus the Midnight Club, which was awful. Um, but he is phenomenal. He's super passionate about the work. It seems like he has experience in this type of thing, and I am cautiously extremely optimistic. <laughs> I'm just so excited. I want a Dark Tower series. I know the movie. Everybody hates it. Um, oh, it's not Amazon Prime yet. It's independent from that deal. Well, honestly, I don't really care about the studio as long as it's not one not on cable TV. Like, I don't want to be on ABC. Uh, but Michael Flanagan being behind it is a very good sign. Um, Joanna, did you hear this news? Is I did. I, I think I heard about it. Am I frozen? You are frozen. It's a good, you look perturbed. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can figure this out. I'm sorry. I'm oh, it'll it. unfreeze. Okay. Don't worry about it. It'll, it'll figure itself out. Um, Joanna has left the building folks. She, I, she has uh, disconnected her device. It says, but yeah, Michael Flanagan. I mean, I think midnight mass is one of the best shows in the last 10 years. And I love haunting a hell house. I thought blind manor was really good. The midnight club was not good. I did not like that show at all. Actually, I think I did. Yeah, I stopped watching after like the penultimate episode. I stopped and I just looked up what happened in the last episode. And I'm like, thank God I didn't waste another hour of my life. Um, did not like it very much. One thing I am concerned about, though, is a, a Dark Tower movie was so poorly received that it does make me a little bit nervous for people not even wanting to give this a shot but to argue with myself season eight of game of thrones was a travesty uh you know in the public uh, opinion and we got house of the dragon and it turned it around so i believe that it is possible that this show could be great and i think it's also a you know probably a good sign that we're getting people who are actually um <laughs> I, I, if people are giving me, uh, I, I soon recall some of the DNF and red and spoilers and got flack. Let's all dog pile Jimmy now. I see. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a little bit optimistic. Also, another good example of this is like the Mandalorian and the Star Wars movies, like the Disney Star Wars movies, like they didn't get super well received, at least from the internet. And then Mandalorian was able to write that shit. So I'm now being booed by, uh, by my own crowd because I DNF the midnight club, which is a horrendous. I should have DNF that, ep that episode like three. I mean, it was terrible. Um, see Scott Kippen says too bad. Haunting of Hill house is not actually like the book. It's interesting. Cause I've actually seen a uh, uh, haunting a Hill house pop up a lot. Whenever people are talking about when adaptations are better than the book, I've seen a lot of people think that the adaptation was better than the book. So I, I that, that's interesting. I do know some people who love the book, though, and it's like their favorite horror book. Um, also asked, so what's your opinion of The Last Jedi, Jimmy? I don't even want to share it because, like, I'm not a huge Star Wars guy. Anyways, and then whenever you say your Star Wars opinion, then everyone is going to tell you theirs. And I just don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna keep it to myself. Ah, uh, see, uh, Annette says the adaptation was uh, better. C got C Scott Kippen says Shirley Jackson is a master. Yeah, I, I've I've heard a lot of love for her. Um, we we have lost Joanna at this point. I wonder when and if she will come back. Um, but until then, I'm gonna answer your guys' questions in the chat. Luxa says a question. So I actually finished Game of Thrones show for the first time. Hated season seven like everyone else. I've been interested in reading some of us and fire is the pros intimidating to get into. Uh, so I don't know what your reading experience is, but I would say no. Um, they're big books and they are a little bit methodical, but no, I, th I think they're very accessible. I think George does a good way, a good job of balancing that and making things um, digestible. So no, no, I don't think it's unapproachable at all. You know, you're not walking into something that is super duper dense. Um, it's also not written, you know, in a way that I think insults the intelligence, which is good. So 
I would say that it is very accessible in my opinion. Um, what else do I have to read? So I am in the middle of the wolf by Leo Carew and I like it. Um, a couple of my patrons said they weren't too big on it. Some people said it was bland. Uh, somebody else DNF it. Uh, they weren't too keen on it, but I am enjoying it thus far. So hopefully I continue to enjoy it. And Joanna's back. I'm so sorry about that. I don't know what happened in my camera settings. It's it was funny. I think the last time you were on, you I had know. technical issues. I just have, yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's all good. I don't know. Is that a coincidence? Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're magical. <laughs> um, this is a good question. We could both answer this one. Jennifer Robin asked, do you have any historical fiction plan in the near future? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Because I'm in the middle, like the first half of 2023 is going to be me finishing stuff I started in 2022. And you all can look out for a video. I'm probably going to do it maybe early January. And it's going to be like series that I'll be continuing and series that I'm not continuing. Because I started a lot of stuff and I get comments a lot. You know, people asking, hey, when are you going to read book two? And I just need to put it out there of like, hey, this is stuff that I'm going to continue. Like Ash and Sand by Richard Nell. I'm going to continue. This is stuff I'm not going to continue. Like Winnowing Flame Trilogy. So I'll probably do a video of like, ongoing series that i'm dnfing and continuing but it seems like you are going to be reading some historical fiction I right am. yes i'm going to be reading shogun that's yeah. and i really want to read lonesome dove at some point i think that's more western I, but i want to read lonesome dove really yeah. bad it was super big for king and i i've just heard the characters are awesome so here's the thing i watched the mini series when i was like 10 years old that was on tv and i still remember it like, I still remember how much it was so long. It was like ridiculously long. And I remember how emotional I got at certain moments. And I'm like thinking, I'm a 10 year old girl, little girl, and I'm completely head over heels into these like old white men. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting, and I'm like, what? I don't know. It was amazing, though. It really blew me away, just the miniseries. So I just have no doubt I'm going to adore that book. That's awesome. I know very little about Shogun other than it's massive. Like it's a pretty big, oh, big book. Yeah. I was just talking about, Oh, were we talking about Shogun now? Uh, Cause I was talking about Lonesome Dove just now. Oh, I, I, I went back. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. no, that's fine. Yeah. no, Lonesome Dove miniseries. I've never seen it, uh, but my dad, I think it was my dad watched it or maybe it was my friend. I can't remember, but I think that that one is probably a guaranteed like for me. Yeah, yes. I would agree. I don't think there's any way that could miss. Yeah, um, my dad was watching the Lonesome Dove series because he had read the book and that was what got me into it. But yeah, with Shogun, both my parents have read Shogun. They're much better, more well-read than I am. And so <laughs> they've read those books um, and they they both loved it. They both adored Shogun, said it was just one of the best books they've ever read. So mm. I'm also looking forward to that too. Yeah, I, I would be curious to read it. Maybe that'll be a 2024 classic I get to if I'm lucky. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, see scott says everyone should read shogun well i'm trying okay well That's let me tell you like when i've been telling people my reading plans for reading shogun i have gotten so many comments of people saying i want to reread it i want to reread it so for me that's a good sign if that many people who love it want to reread it you know that's that's always a you know oh good yeah sign. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a great question from Oso. He said, who would win in the cage match uh nayor or cal drogo nay I, I would take nayor yeah, probably near. He suplexed a horse. He <laughs> what? He just he just casually suplexes a horse in book oh. one. I think it's book one. Yikes. He literally just picks up a horse and suplexes it. You know how ridiculously strong you have to be to do that? It's insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, have you read The Shot of What Was Lost? I haven't, but it's been recommended to me a lot because it has time travel in it. I think. Is that the Lycanius tri trilogy? I have no idea. Um, but I, it is a, uh, Lacanius is how you say it, Lacanius trilogy. Uh, yeah, it is true. that I know nothing about it. I literally don't know a single thing about this, uh, but I'm reading book one because it was on the patron wheel this mm, month. So. Let me know what you think. Cause I've heard it's, I've heard it's really, I don't know. I've heard it's good, but then I've also heard that the prose leaves much to be desired. Hmm. So I've, I've heard some people say that the, the, um, difficulty or the denseness of the series like including like the magic gets like there's a huge jump in book one and two where people are, like, it's really jarring like either people are glad or they're like what is this um but people say stuff all the time joanna and i don't know if they're 
I don't know if they're sane. So I got to figure out for myself. I just hope it's good. I, I, I don't need to love it. I just hope it's good. Um, it's one that I've seen so many times and I just always pass over it. But now I'm forced to read it. So I'm excited to see where I end up landing and maybe I can throw my voice into the uh, endless void of polarizing opinions about that series. Yeah, you're buddy. I mean, you're not buddy reading, but you're starting a ton of series this month, right? Yes. All five books that got picked are series. All five. Okay. But and the I don't have to continue up Blood and Fire. I'm not going to continue the Ryan Cahill trilogy. Uh, I am absolute number one like goal is to finish the three body problem trilogy without a doubt. Mm -hmm. And then the wolf I'm up in the air. I'm still reading it. I'm liking it, but it's not like blowing. There's some things about, I love, but it's not like blowing my wig back, making me go and I got to finish this trilogy immediately. So that's still up in the air. So that's not so bad, but then I have um, the Mark Lawrence red Queens war trilogy. I'm going to start. And then the shadow of what was lost starts the Lincoln is Lacanus, whatever the hell mm -hmm. it's called. So maybe I'll get out of it. Like maybe I should be rooting for them to be bad. So I don't have to continue. Reading <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have no problems DNFing series personally. Like if I'm just if book one, either felt good enough as a standalone mm -hmm. or um, if I just, you know, didn't really connect with it, then I have no problems with that. Augustus is really good. I really enjoyed Augustus. Yeah. I DNF'd it. Uh, but not because it wasn't great. I just didn't really yeah. want to read it at the time. Uh, John Williams's prose is among the best I've ever read. Um, I, I actually thought of you at the end of that because I, I felt like you would resonate with it. I, I know. I thought it was fantastic. Like it's, it's categorically a great book. I just yeah. did not want to be reading letters. That's just how I understand it was, that. Yeah. You know? I, I was, I was pretty blown away by it. I was pretty blown away by it. And I was like thinking, did I love this more than Stoner? Well, all right. Now you let's love Stoner. Joanna, I will ban you from my channel. Uh, you well, cannot love anything more than Stoner. Spoiler alert. I love Stoner more. I think okay. I'm just like that. Yeah. Because okay, at first I was like, is it recency bias? And I've spent some time and I've really processed things. I've really thought about it. And I'm like, no, Stoner. Still, Stoner has my heart. <laughs> okay. Whew. Yeah. Thank goodness. I'm so in love with that book. Yeah. Um. And I was also going to ask you, did you read Red Seas Under Red Skies? Because I know you said you started it. Yes. And that was what I was about to bring up. You know, we talk about standalones, but I wanted to read, read uh, Red Seas Under Red Skies and a bunch of my patrons were going to read it. So I said, well, let's just do it. And I, I had a little too much to drink at the patron hangout and I agreed to it. Uh, so I had to fit it in and I did. And I loved it. I thought it was great. In some ways, I thought it was worse than the first book, but in some ways, I thought it was better. And the one thing that people talk about the Gentleman Bastards constantly mm -hmm. is about Jean, uh, Jean and Locke mm -hmm. being the friendship. You got to get the friendship. I felt like that wasn't solidified till book two. I thought mm -hmm. book two is what put their friendship over. It was good in book one. I really enjoyed it. The camaraderie was great. Yeah. But Red Seas is where it earns its keep as far yeah. as being one of like the better duos in fantasy or friendships in fantasy i thought um i also really liked the setting more in book two i thought the setting was better i knew you'd love that the vegas like island yeah it, it was just yeah. fun I, yeah. I i felt like i could feel it a little bit more like it was a little bit more atmospheric even though i did think book one also had a good setting uh now where i think that it's a little wonky and i thought book one was also a little wonky in this regard but it was much more prevalent in book two was the plot yeah. there's a lot of ridiculous stuff that has to happen for that book to work and i don't know if i always believed uh things that were happening you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm not going to call them conveniences because he actually does always go through the painstaking process of explaining how Locke is a genius and he figured all this out. And this person believed one thing he said and blah, 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 blah. Um, so I felt like Red Seas Under Red Sky should have been two books in a way. Because it was like two plots, really. Yeah. And then like, and then we came back. Well, I'm not going to spoil it, but, you know, you get to the ending and it, it's a little rushed. It's just like a little bit like, blah, you know, we're done. <laughs> and I'm just like, I wish... I wish it would have taken a little bit more time. Like I wouldn't mind in the book being maybe an extra 200 pages. So. Yeah. I adored that book though. I adored oh, yeah. the nautical setting. I adored the Vegas like Island and the tears and the way that that was described. Yeah. And I loved um, the captain Dracasha. Is it Zamora? The 
the female captain pirate. I, think, I captain. believe it's Zamora, but I could I could be wrong. I think that sounds right. Zamora. We'll just go Ke with that. Kev can let me know in chat because he he yeah. absolutely loved it. So. I just adored that character so much. I thought she was so awesome. I was like, this is a really <laughs> awesome female character. Meow said the monstrous little necessity. Yeah, there's a lot of cats, and for oh, me, yeah. that's a big win. I don't yeah. know. I think Scott Lynch is a great writer as far as his like style and his mm -hmm. alliteration and stuff. I went over that in Liza Locke Lamora review, but Scott Lynch is one of those dudes. Like, I don't really care what he publishes about. I'll probably read it. Uh, I just like his, his writing. Is so good. He is a brilliant writer. That was the thing that surprised me. Cause I read, um, lies of Locke Lamora. I guess it was like 2018, 2007. It was a while ago. And so it, I had taken quite a, long time before picking up red seas under red skies and then when i picked that up i i was thinking man i'd forgotten what a great writer this man is dang yeah it, it kept kind of uh you know catching the corner of my eye and then when all my patrons were like we're gonna read it and i was like fine let's do it like i really wanted to get to it and uh I, i'm actually excited for book three i know there's a decent amount of people that say book three is our least favorite but the f i know kind of what it entails bonds magi that kind of thing so like i'm really excited to get back to that stuff so yeah i don't know i'm uh i'm good I, I i'm okay that it's unfinished as well like i don't necessarily care all that much and i just enjoy every page that i read of that even whenever i think some of the stuff isn't like the best i just mm -hmm. like his writing so i think alan would love red seas under red skies Gentlemen Bastards, there's never been a swashbuckling series written more for someone than that series in Allen. And I told him, I said, listen, I recommended you Stoner. And I and I came to him with a very serious demeanor. I said, listen, you need to read this book. <laughs> Thank this you. is this is like this is imperative that you read this. Yes. And he listened to me and he read Stoner. And I'm so glad he did because it was big for him. And I said, I'm coming to you with Stoner levels of recommendation. You have to read lies of aquamora because it's just it's made for him it's it's what he loves i've been saying this since i've met alan since i've met him i'm like you have to read the gentleman bastards you have to read the lies of aquamora but even the red seas under red skies i think he'd even love that more honestly well i loved it more so maybe i'm just projecting my own bias but i think both are great books i think mm -hmm. they're great modern fantasy books and i wish more people wrote like him i think he's definitely a part of that like Le Guin lineage where she's like you know over like write your fantasy with spirit and charisma. And he does that. So yes, I know there's some people who don't, they're like, I don't understand the hype and stuff, but for me, like it's even less about the plot. Like I even said in my lives, locker more, more review. I said, this isn't the type of story I usually love, but because of who wrote it, I did. And I loved it. it. I, I mean, I, I feel the same way in a way, like about the plot. And at the same time, like, I just don't care. Cause I just, I love that he was willing to go there with the way he describes the set, his, his settings. Like they don't always feel like they're totally relevant, but they are kind of, and mm -hmm. I don't know, like they relate to themes. I think his settings relate to themes more than plot points in some ways, mm -hmm. but I just, I just adore them. I just adore how out there he gets sometimes with the, with uh, describing things. I also think he's funny. Yes, I think so too. It makes he's me hilarious. laugh. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and you know, that that's going to be different for everybody that reads them. But mm -hmm. for me, I like it. Um, I did have a question here I wanted to answer. Jesse Hughes says, have you read Kingdoms of Death is as good as Demon White? So a lot of people believe uh, believe so. So this is me with an unpopular opinion. But I thought Kingdoms of Death was not as good as Demon of White. It was my least favorite Sun Eater book. I still liked it. I think it's a good book, but it was not to the same level as like howling dark and demon in white. But again, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't read it. You should definitely read it. It's really important for the series and I'm super stoked for book five. And I'm also in the minority and not liking kingdoms of death as much as some of the others. So. So Jimmy, what would you recommend for me first? Would you recommend um, reading sun eater or three body problem? You know, I... so sun eater is like fantasy in space. So it depends on if you're really trying to get more of like the classical sci-fi experience with that set. I'm more, I, I'm more inclined to believe that you will like three body problem more because some people can't get, it, it's going to be very dependent on whether or not you like the chronicling uh, voice of Hadrian Marlowe. Because he is telling you his tale. Very similar to the name of the wind in that regard. And they're not the same book. And if you say that, you don't know what you're talking about. They're not the same books. They're both chronicling. I'm just saying that 
you know, some people don't like uh, Koth or whatever his name is. And then they're like, I don't like Name of the Wind. It's like, well, that makes sense. So mm -hmm. if you don't click with Hadrian, there's a chance that, that it couldn't work for you. But I don't know. I think Sun Eater's dope. I think it's a great series. And I actually don't like love Hadrian. <laughs> That's the funny thing is like, I actually disagree with him on a lot of stuff yeah. fundamentally. But the dialogue is interesting to have with the character and the way he talks to you. And also Rocchio is, uh, he is really great writing. So yeah. uh, I am for you to read both. Um, the nice thing about three body problem is that it's really short and it's done. So you could blitz through those pretty easy, I think. Um, but man, Sun Eater is also pretty great. Yeah. I've been, that's, it's fun to see the chat too <laughs> with people um, chiming in with that. Yeah, I, you know, I did actually try to start listening to the audiobook of um, the first Sun Eater, The Empire of Silence. Yeah. And I just couldn't do it. It was like Alan, I kept rewinding and rewinding and rewinding. And there's was, a lot of world building. Yeah. What is happening here? <laughs> Sam yeah. Roken is a great narrator, but yeah, yeah, I could see it being challenging with all the, uh, everything being thrown at you and all the terms and technology and stuff. I think I might immersion read it because I've heard, yeah, because it's what I did and it's really good. So. Yeah, he, he's the voice of Hadrian for me. So like I even when I like sub vocalize, that's what I hear. So I'm like, well, let's just throw in the audiobook. Like, why not? Yeah. yeah. So do you do you immersion read a lot and then just after a while feel comfortable enough to just go audio after a while when you read? Mm, it depends. Um I try not to do just audio because I have found that my enjoyment of books on average seem to be less whenever I listen to just audio. Um, a lot of times I'll start out with immersion reading and then shut off the narrator and then just continue mm -hmm. to kind of flow through it. Um, but lately I've been doing a lot more of just eyeballing. So that's been great though. I did feel like the three body problem was very easy to digest on audio for some reason. Like I did that, I did the back half of that book on audio and I felt pretty good about it and retained all of it from what I can tell. And yeah, I don't know. How, how about you? I'm the same way. Usually I can't, um, usually I tend to, if I'm going to immersion read, sometimes I'll immersion read and I won't go just on audio from there. Mm -hmm. um, and if I do, sometimes I, I usually end up going back over it anyway and reading it with my eyes. But I do sometimes immersion read a little bit and then I'll just go off with my eyes. Yeah, I do yeah. that. Too. Yeah. Sometimes I even find myself reading uh, ahead of the narrator, but I don't like the speed, like what it sounds like to read at my actual eye, like reading speed. So like that gets a little awkward for me. So that's usually when I also shut it off. If I feel like I'm not vibing with it, um, especially when I'm into the story, because like I will be reading ahead because I want to know what's going on. <laughs> so, yeah. um, Jade asks, oh, what's my favorite Sun Eater book? It is Howling Dark, which I think is also another hot take. I think most people like Demon of White more, but I like Howling Dark. The is most. that the third? Second. Second. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. there's there's a really weird beginning to the second book that I won't say. And a lot of people are like, everything is great in that book besides the beginning. But I actually like the beginning, um, which whenever you read it, I'll, I'll be <laughs> happy to discuss it with you because I'd love to hear your take on it. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um yeah. And I was also going to ask you about the Dandelion Dynasty, because I I understand that that first book, I, a lot of people have talked about it being kind of omniscient mm -hmm. and having a lot of historical overview. And I kind of felt like that was the reading experience of um, a little bit of the darkness that comes before at times. So would you say that they're comparable in any way? No. Not really. Not mm -hmm. really. Uh, I would say that uh, Grace of Kings is a lot more similar to the Warlord Chronicles and the fact that like in between chapters, like months and months can go by. And in a paragraph, like you could jump like a year. So it's a sweeping, almost historical epic. Darkness that comes before has that omniscient part, but like those Akamian chapters are so intimate. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you yeah. don't really get that level of intimacy until the sequels in dandelion so okay. it's just that first book is a little bit more of like a sweeping mythic epic hmm. okay yeah i feel like it's been so helpful to hear that i mean i haven't read the book yet and i do want to i want to read the dandelion dynasty at some part some at some point sorry kevin but uh i do think it's helpful to know that going in because i could see that throwing me off if i didn't know that yeah 
Um, Jennifer wants to know when you plan on yes. continuing Room of the Elderlings, which is my question. I like, what, to, what are you doing? Yes, that I almost I'm almost wanting to prioritize that over the sci-fi I want to read, over Sun Eater and over um, Three Body Problem. I kind of want to go right into the live ship traders. It's just tricky because I'm also doing the Song of Ice and Fire read along. Yeah, Sonic you're booked. Song. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna fit in a read along with Alan in there, like. And then Shogun. Well, because we're gonna be doing it slowly. Because <laughs> <laughs> nice. he, he said he's like, I'm only doing it if we don't do it all in a month. If we spread it out and we just decide stopping points, you know, along the way, so we get, you know. And I, I'm like, I'm all for that. That sounds yeah. fun for me. And Alan's read it before. He's read Shogun before, and he's probably a lot more clued into the history with that too. So, yeah, yeah. you should consider joining us. <laughs> no way, can't do it. <laughs> can't do it. This is the year of the anti read along, ah. anti um, sweeping epic read alongs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hermit myself in my channel, and I'm just gonna finish all these <laughs> goddamn series that I've started. Yeah. That's amazing because I know when we talked, I think like after Malaz and you're like, I've pretty much read all the series I want to read right now. I don't even know what to read. Yeah, it, it, it was a little frightening because I was like, what happens now? And then I read Aspect Emperor and then I really felt like, oh, God, I'm up Shit's Creek without a paddle here. Like, <laughs> what else do I read? But now I have found some other stuff that I've enjoyed. Like, honestly, Gentle and Bastards is a surprise without a doubt. Um, I am going to be reading, you know, some more of the literary classics, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. And then, uh, you know, there's always like random self pubs and stuff that are that are coming along and I try them out and some hit some miss. But yeah, I don't know. And honestly, I think we're going to get the winds of winter. I think we're going to get the winds of winter. Not this year, but I think it, uh, my guess has always been 2024 November. I've been saying this since like 2019, just as a joke. Mm -hmm. And turns out that that actually might be happening. Cause he says he only has four to 500 pages left wow. and, and he's writing like he is writing a lot and he's rewritten a lot. So mm -hmm. I'm optimistic. And let me tell you folks, if wins of winter gets announced, my channel is going on like high alert. <laughs> like mm -hmm. that'll be the first reading vlog you'll ever see from me. Will be me reading wins of winter as a vlog. Oh, I bet. I bet. That'll be, that'll be so exciting. Yeah. Oh my I God. do. I need to prioritize hop somehow. Yeah, I, I definitely need to get to that. Yeah, the next year is going to be kind of tricky for me with the a Song of Ice and Fire read along, but I need to reread it. I just need to. Yeah. And you know what? Just enjoy it because like yeah. you have all this other stuff you got to get to. Just like we said, be in the moment. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's definitely going to be a priority number one. Be Be water. Joanna. Be water. <laughs> Become a Taoist. Yes. <laughs> well it's been so nice talking with you and i appreciate your flexibility with having alan do a little bit of a health check-in i know that that was important to you as well as me you know mm -hmm. loving him so much um i want to thank you for coming on and yeah. uh and I, I it will not be this long again i promise between shows oh, thank you so much well no i appreciate it so much jimmy thank you and thank you everybody in the chat for joining in this has been so much fun yeah, absolutely. And if you're looking for a Song of Ice and Fire reread, uh, you know, Joanna is going to be hosting one in this coming year. And it is big. I mean, there's a star studded cast of characters that are going to be there. I'll be in the chat probably arguing with everyone about how they don't get it and how George is a master of his craft. But, you know, that that that's the fun of it. So I would encourage you to go check out Joanna's channel, of course, and uh, join her for the Song of Ice and Fire read along. And uh, Joanna, thank you. Yay. Thank you to me chat thank you for being here we appreciate you make sure to subscribe to joanna and alan let's get him to 10k as well there is a patreon in the description it's optional but always appreciated you can hit like on this video to help people find it and all that good stuff subscribe did i do it all i got all the youtube shit okay we're good good great <laughs> grand i love you guys have a good weekend next friday 7 30 p.m eastern time tad Mother effing Williams will be here on the channel and I cannot wait. I will see you then until I see you next time. Be good. Be safe. Remember to always keep turning the page. <laughs>